here is Jordan Hussein, Mark Adamiak ready, and we are underway. Our plate umpire tonight is Jason Blackburn. Clint Wheeler will umpire at first, Manny Gonzalez at second, Bradford Polk over at third on a 74 degree night. You see the numbers for Hussein. Fifth year player out of the Houston area. And we, of course, remember his mustache. We only see this team one time a year, but how could you forget the mustache from Jordan Hussein? Oh, yeah, he's got an A game going on that mustache. That's, that's big league right yeah. there. Probably hasn't shaved it since last year or cleaned off that uh, batting helmet. That's Biggio-esque for a Houston area kid. Probably had that all five years. That's a strike from Adamiak. Damiak has slid in nicely to some of these midweek games. A chance for him to get some extended innings. He threw four innings, gave up a run against Grambling on a Tuesday game back on March the 15th. Brett, that's the second time in this batter that Damiak has landed kind of funny. It's almost like that his, his landing spot isn't, isn't right. Now, you know, you'd think you'd got that fixed up in warm-up tosses, but... That front stride foot is just looks like it's a little uncomfortable, almost like he's rolling that ankle. And he shanked a few. Wind's not pushing him off the hill, is it? It's not blowing that. I don't, well, it's actually blowing the opposite direction, so it, at least uh, keep him, <laughs> keep him more straight. Kind of has a tendency to fall off toward the first base dugout. But you remember that grambling start try. He's just bragging on his four innings, one run. Remember, he gave up a hit. There was a caught stealing, walked a batter, gave up a double, had to fight his way through, and then he found it after that. Right. He really turned it around. And, Again, he's got great stuff. That's, there's no doubt about that. He just to be, needs to be more consistent with that strike zone. This is Nathan Lyons, a Bentonville High School product. There's a snap throw back to first. It's Leach catching tonight. And this Little Rock team, they like to run. Coach Curry told us before the game, I don't know if we'll try and run against Turner. Well, he's at first. Now we'll see if they want to run against Leach. <laughs> Might change the script a little bit more, I think. I think in a game like today, you're going to have to play a little bit of small ball. You might see teams bunt a little bit more with this wind blowing in. Nice stop by Leach right there. And he's going to go have a conversation with Adamiak. I think this is a good move. And so is Robert Moore is going to come in. I think that shows some veteran leadership by both those players. Remember a year ago, Nathan Lyons hit a home run in this ballpark. Brett, this is a Trojans team that came in hitting 311. They can swing the bats. There's no doubt about that. Well, he's generous on the eye black tonight, isn't he? Back at home. Kind of looks like a little bit of Jalen Battles working there. I like think you got to get a putty knife to take that might. stuff off at the end of the night, don't you? you? Just leave that on for tomorrow if we play. Adamiak will flip over to first. Hussein, who's stolen four, back in diving. But uh, your point's a good one, Troy. We're going to mention a lot of big-time offensive numbers, really the first four or five hitters in this Little Rock lineup. Webb somewhat shallow in center. The pitch to Lions is fouled back and out of play. This Trojans team, they've attempted 38, excuse me, attempted 50 steals. They've been successful 38 times. So they're not afraid to run. Just underway tonight, the Trojans and the Razorbacks. Hussein drew the base on balls against Adamiak. And that one's up and out, 91 of the gun, but he's falling behind the Trojans' third baseman. And the thing about Adamiak is he's missing in the same spot. Everything is away is. from those right-handed batters. So you, know, you need to make an adjustment. I know pitchers don't like to move on the mound, but it's almost like Turner needs to sit up on the inside corner if he wants that pitch down the middle. Needs a strike here, and he left that a little bit elevated. That's back-to-back -back walk. So we've seen one mound visit by Leach. I'm sure Matt Hobbs would like to wait to go out there, but uh, we'll see what happens against Dickerson and McWilliams. This is the defense. Remember, it always looks a little bit different midweek, and that is Varnado getting the start in right with no Slavens. Webb and Lancilli, the other outfielders. Also see Michael Turner over at first, no Peyton Stovall. And Dylan Leach behind the plate. There's Michael. Gotta love it when you have guys that can play multiple positions. 
El Barnado's athletic enough to play some outfield, be able to pull Turner out and give Legion an opportunity to catch and keep him in the ball game. And yeah, whatever gets your name in that lineup. Now, Hobbs can no longer wait with Dickerson in, who's a tremendous hitter for the Trojans. But after a couple of walks and a miss here, nine of the 11 have been out of the zone. Coach Hobbs on an early visit. He was just getting settled in over there on his little perch in the <laughs> dugout. He's got to go to work. Talking about Noah Dickerson, who's at the plate, some tremendous numbers. Hitting 363 on the season. He's hit six home runs, slugging 712. On base percentage, 452. That'll catch a lot of people's attention. Coach Hobbs has had one angry visit this year. This is a calm and collected and how we feeling? What do we need to do to get out of the sitting? Gonna look like the last few of the pitches the Dominic threw at the very end were kind of guided, especially that last ball four. Again, he tried to make a little bit of an adjustment going over the top instead of that little bit of three quarters release. Problem is though, you mentioned the numbers for Dickerson. and the last thing you want to do is now guide one in. He leads this team in eight statistical categories offensively and Coach Curry said this is just a long, lean, buggy whip type hitter. Creates a lot of bounce speed, ton of power. You can see he's definitely fighting the wind there. That jersey's just wailing. He's kind of shaking his head to the umpire saying, this is crazy. <laughs> that jersey barely hangs on him to begin with. So not a bunning situation, and he will take one down the chute for a called strike. Definitely one of those games, you, as a hitter, you have to be thinking line drive, ground ball, because anything in the air is definitely going to get held up. But here's the other thing. If you hit something in the air with two outs, you better be running, because there's a pretty good chance that it might hit the ground. Hussein at second, Lions aboard at first. That's a wave and a miss. That pitch kind of floated away from Dicker. Somebody cut through it. I think that's what Chris Curry was talking about, the head coach for the Trojans, saying that these players only come up with players on base, guys on base, they, they feel like they've got so much pressure on themselves that they're trying to do too much. I think that was Noah Dickerson on that last swing. Yeah, it's only natural, only human nature. That one just about clipped him. He was doing everything he could to get out of the way rather than wearing one just out of instinct, but Dodomiak was pretty close to seeing the bases go loaded. Well, I think when it's up by your chin, that's just a better reaction. No, it does help, right? Like, okay, let's get that head out of the way. I thought he could roll and maybe take one off of the back of his shoulder. He's a hitter. He wants to swing it. Pretty calm and collected Adamiak, but trying not to work himself into a jam here in the first. And the 2-2 two -two is hit hard. That's in the right. That's a base hit. Hussein will turn third. He's going to score. Lions to third. The Trojans strike first. one nothing. Little Rock. Three base runners, and then another big hit from Dickerson over the course of this season. He's knocked in 24 runs. Yeah, what a quality hitter in Noah Dickerson. This is just a really smooth, not trying to do too much with the swing right there. That is just a bullet right through the right side. And again, he just continues to rake at the plate. And like you said, Brett, those free base runners coming around to score for the Trojans. I think the frustrating part, though, for Adamiak, Troy, he's not any closer to getting eight out, let alone beginning that process of getting three. This is a fun story. We'll talk more about Canyon McWilliams. D3 hitting star who now been at Little Rock for a couple of years. That one's letter high in his jersey. He's knocked in 18 runs, an Ohio native. I mean, that's a grown man batting cleanup for Little Rock. And how about that OPS, 937? That's pretty impressive. And he's one of those guys that might be able to hit it through the teeth of this wind. That one's going to be back and out of play. You almost feel like it, that the opportunity for left-handers, left-handed hitters, is to hit that ball to left field. That with that side spin on it, it seems like it's going to carry out. With that cross breeze blowing out from the right foul, field foul pole to the left field foul pole, you can hear the wind on our crowd mic. Leach sets the target, and that one fouled back again by McWilliams, young man who started his career at Ohio Wesleyan. A year ago, had a season-ending injury on February 27th, got the medical hardship. 
but it was last year at Oklahoma State he had the first ever home run in the Cowboys' new stadium on February 24th. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Can't take that away from him. Trying to keep this first inning very much alive, and it's a little soft blooper towards Caden Wallace. He'll make the catch. Damiak just continued to pound McWilliams inside and absolutely sawed him off right there. I don't know if that was on purpose or just where all his pitches have been going into lefties away from righties. Now, Brett, Adamiak has the kind of stuff that he can get out of this jam. He's got swing and miss type of stuff where he can really saw people off like you saw right there. Well, it's another good hitter. Another 18 runs batted in in the lineup from Tyler Williams. It's at the belt inside corner for a called strike. Yeah, I remember Tyler Williams. He's definitely one of those guys that has quality at bats almost every single time he steps in the box. So a guy that really has a plan and really likes to work those pitchers into hitters counts. 59 hits a year ago, 16 doubles, 42 runs batted in. And he's a Mantroy that likes to have big games on big stages. Last year, this team went to Auburn. He had three hits. He was just a home run shy of hitting for the cycle. Yeah, really nice swing. Again, will hit to all fields. He's got a little bit of pop as well. Damiak out of the stretch, gets the wave of the miss. Williams kind of waved through that offering. That's the pitch that Adamiak hasn't been able to command so far, hasn't thrown very often, is that slider, and it's it's a really good one. He's just got to be able to land it. Runners on the corners, one out. And that one's fouled back again. It's a really good two-strike approach right there by Williams, really pulled those hands inside the baseball. And Again, you're going to have to fight the fastball off and almost sit on off speed with two strikes. 24th pitch here in this first from Adamiak. He gets the wave and a miss. Williams helped him out. That's a big second out for the Hawks. And the fastball has a lot of carry. The rule of that short arm makes it seem harder than what it is. I think that was about 91-92, but it just jumps out of the hand of Adamiak. A couple of walks at a base hit, produced a run, a soft pop-up, and a strikeout since. And Miguel Soto, the left fielder, is the next man in. He's hit a couple of home runs this season. Trying to get at least one more run out of this first for Little Rock. They had a 4-0 lead in the first inning on Sunday. Ended up losing 10-5, and as Coach Curry said, our bullpen was toast after we had to throw 14 innings on Friday night. And App State just waited them out until there was a crack, and then they took advantage late. Yeah, that's really tough when that first game you chew up so many innings and your whole pitching staff is pretty depleted. That's well placed. The command that had eluded Adamiak to begin this frame seems to be finding its way back into form. But it also looks like that Adamiak's not falling off the mound as much as that he does was help, earlier. right? Yeah, <laughs> he was really falling off almost maybe toward the Arkansas – on deck circle, and now he's going to drive him more toward home plate. That's scooped nicely by Leach. The last thing Adamiak or the Razorbacks want to see is a free one to the screen to score a run. One of those innings against Mizzou, there were several wild pitches in a frame that really kind of provided most of the scoring that inning. Yeah, I think it was three in a row. It was pretty crazy. It felt like about six in a row, I'm sure, if you were in that <laughs> Arkansas dugout. Two and one to Soto. And that one fouled back. This will not be an efficient inning for Adamiak, but if he can get three straight outs and be around 30 on the pitch count after the first three reached, he'll have to take it. There is a body in the Arkansas bullpen. I'm not sure if he's throwing or not yet, but on the mound, but I you feel like Adamiak's really kind of right of the ship at this point. I'd love to see him throw that slider down and away right here. Big deep breath before the 2-2 runner going. Ground ball under the glove of Wallace in the left. 
Lions will score, and the Trojans have played it a pair in the first on the base hit from Soto. Nice job by Soto. This is a slider that was up in the zone. That's about belt high. Soto doesn't miss it. You can see Leach felt like that he knew that runner was going. But that's just a bullet right past Wallace at third. Really good inning for the Trojans right now. Again, we talked about how well this team can swing the bat. You just cannot give them free base runners. Indeed, and now the seventh man to hit will be the catcher, Jake Wright. Bryant, Arkansas native. He's hit three home runs this year. We talked in the open about Arkansas's consistency, winning all of the series, and whether it's 12 straight SEC series victories or what they've done overall. I will say most of this year, though, Troy, they have not made things either, whether it was losing the first game out of a series to Illinois State or to Southeastern or falling behind in games that they were able to come back to win. They have dug themselves some holes. They really have, but I think it's just kind of a – the character of this coaching staff and this team that kind of takes on that character of the coaching staff is not to panic. You, you know, they've yeah, listened to comments in the dugout and they're saying, hey, let's let's walk this one off or let's, let's you know, just call our way back into it. And I think that just is a testimony of just kind of the mentality and the toughness of this team. But you're right. They have really kind of scuffled, you know, in all aspects. Again, they're still ranked really high and they're a really good team, but they're not clicking on all cylinders. And that one's up and out. That's 32 pitches now for Adamiak. 16 balls, 16 strikes. It's spoken to how this inning has not been crisp. Two walks, both have scored. And Dickerson at second, Soto aboard at first. And that's outside now, three and one. But I mean, again, you might come into this yeah. inning, Troy, thinking, you know, you'd like to get Adamiak three, four innings into this game, and now you're fighting just to get through this first. Yeah, and again, he, he consistently misses away from those right-handed batters. And again, it's it's easy to say, hey, make an adjustment when you're up here in the broadcast booth, but that's one thing you have to do. It's like, what what do you need to do to bring that ball back in the zone, maybe keep that front shoulder closed just a little bit longer? Fouled right back to the screen. Do you feel that? dramatic fall off I mean is, is his body aware of that or is he fighting it mentally not thinking he's falling off as much as he actually is I think he probably feels it and and again it to me it almost looked like it was the the landing spot on the mound that he just hasn't been comfortable with and again the the mound in the bullpen is going to be different than the mound on the field and I'm not trying to make excuses for him but there's been multiple times that he's kind of looked down or that stride foot has landed and that ankle's kind of twisted a little bit it hadn't been a and landed that foot, front foot squarely. Runners go, and that ball's blistered to left field. That's down to the fence, and this may score too. Here comes Soto. He's going to round third. He is going to score on a two-run double from right. It's a four spot in the first for Little Rock. Wow, great swing by right. That is a ball up in the zone, and these Little Rock hitters have waited to see that ball up. And he just absolutely hammers that. You can see almost no stride right there. Just good short stroke. Everybody knows how what a great catcher right is. He's on the Buster Posey watch list, but he's going to get a little more accolades right there if you swing the bat like that, Brett. That's going to do it for Adamiak. After he got that second out, had a chance to maybe escape with a lengthy inning, but maybe only one run scoring instead. Soto got an RBI base hit right, drove in a pair. We'll step aside. Not the way the Hogs drew this one up. It's already 4 0. Well, Troy, I asked you what you wanted for your birthday about a half an hour ago, and you said a first inning that never ends. But I don't think this is what you had in mind. Yeah, this is a lot of baseball already, and it's <laughs> definitely going the way of the Trojans. Arkansas is going to go to the bullpen. They're going to bring in Miller Plyman again. It kind of all started with the Dominic with those first two walks and then three straight hits for Little Rock, and they've looked like the real deal so far. And Miller Plyman, he's a guy that he'll set in the upper 80s, low 90s, a Fayetteville native. And he definitely is a strike thrower. He's got a big curveball as well, too. So Dave Van Horn and Matt Hobbs just want him to come in there and pound the strike zone. 
They want him to get that third out so that they can bat. But that is true. You know, we told you when we were providing this Trojans lineup, this is a good hitting team. Uh, they've done nothing but uh, tack on to that notoriety. Here is Aiden Garrett, a young man making his fourth career start. Batting here in the first, and he will hit that one foul near the tarp. Defense has been a bit of an issue for the Trojans, and Figueroa has played some short, maybe has not been completely healthy, and Coach Curry said to Garrett, I want you just to go take care of your business fielding the baseball, not worry at all about your offense, but I think he's curious to see how this kid responds in the next couple of weeks. I think so. Big opportunity for Garrett right here. 13 at bats on the year. And Plyman not close on that one. I go back to thinking about the at-bats that these Trojans have kind of put together so far in this first inning, Brett. I think really by only one swing by Noah Dickerson, it was a ball that was outside the zone. Everything else they've swung at is has been a strike or they've taken their walks and just an outstanding plate presence and approach tonight. It's a rip and a miss. Coach Curry talked about a two-strike approach and I think it's just taking pride Troy and putting balls in play and sometimes that doesn't mean you're coming through with the big hit or even a hit but you know make these pitchers work or then take advantage of some balls in the zone. I think baseball is such a tough sport that you know, sometimes you have to break it down into the smallest thing and just quality at bats I think is a good one. That's a wave and a miss so that's in a series that Arkansas swept he went one for 14 and then Troy, he had two hits in his first two at-bats at Mizzou on Friday. Yeah, a little bit streaky right there, and that's a good way to start off this game for Caden Wallace. And Caden Wallace aboard. The Hogs might not be able to have the same type of power tonight with the wins. We'll see if they can string together some hits against Weatherly, who, by the way, was a starter for the first four weekends. So it's not as if he's not used to starting. And I think Coach Curry and the Trojans were pretty happy with how he pitched. They needed another arm in the bullpen, and, and that's where he went. They had a kid emerge by the name of Haas Brewer. And if you're a pitcher with the first name Haas, you have to be good. You yeah, have to emerge. You, you have to. <laughs> you have to be a Haas. You have to be a big kid, too. Well, speaking of emerging, how about Braden Webb? Troy, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, we would break into sweats when he was at the box. He was 0 for 23. He was just trying to get that first hit, try to get on the board. Arkansas was, was down an outfielder with Borfin, and we were wondering maybe if Jace was healthy, what would the playing time look like for Webb? Well, since then, he's jumped out to those four home runs. He hits a home run here. He'll have more home runs than anybody on this team. His batting average in conference play better than anybody else. So it shows you how quickly things can turn when you, you find that missing mojo. Yeah, I definitely think so. That's what Dave Van Horn kind of knew that he had in Braden Webb. And, and a guy that has always been kind of – he hasn't been major with major injuries, but always had nagging injuries, Brett. And I think it's really hurt him and with uh, his performance. And I think he's finally feeling healthy, and you can see the results. And I think he's playing and not thinking. He's reacting. And there's a big difference. I definitely think so. When you are really pressing, again, that baseball looks like a BB coming up there at you. And had the big home run on Friday night against Missouri to clinch that first victory 7-5. to five. That was a huge homer late in that game. I mean, it's only natural to go up there and you start to think, and you're like, yeah, he's going to throw me a fastball. He didn't. I bet he spots a fastball. Boy, those darn TV announcers were talking about how I'm struggling. <laughs> Why am I thinking about the TV announcers? Why am I thinking about Troy? i got to get – you know, it's the mind starts racing. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. And it, it's amazing as an athlete whenever the game starts slowing down, you hear that term used a lot. But it, but it really does. Pitches seem like you see him real well. That was a really good pitch right there by pitch. Weatherly. I thought he had the strikeout. It must have missed, just missed on the outside corner, but great pitch. But, again, I think it all started with Webb. You pointed it out that he, he drew a couple walks. And you, to be able to draw a walk, you have to be able to see the baseball. And I think that was a good sign. Again, we talked about just as a hitter, you just want to go up there and have good at-bats. If you walk or hit the ball hard somewhere, and that's that's all you can really do. Sometimes you don't walk because you're chasing. You're expanding the zone. Sure. You're, you're jumpy at the plate. While it's still at first, Caden's drawing a ton of throws. He's had a pretty big lead over there, and you're down by four. If you're Weatherly, you probably have to think, okay, he's probably not going to try to steal in this <laughs> no, situation. I don't think he is. 
Unless he just gets bored by having to die back in the first. <laughs> Another one-two pitch to Webb. That's down to shoot for a strike. May have overthought that one, though. Yeah, I think he, he was almost sitting breaking ball right there, too. and the fastball just froze him. This is a painful feeling when you realize that's a fastball in the hitting zone. Yeah, that, that really wasn't on the corner. It looked like it split the plate. But good job by Weather, Weatherly. And, again, that was – the pitch was over the middle, but it was down, right at the knees. Here's Michael Turner getting the start at first tonight. Leads this team in batting average. Slugging percentage up over 600. Leads the team in RBIs. Leads the team in hits. You know, he mentioned to me, Troy, after that Kentucky series, he said, listen, the number of arms I faced – from Friday through Sunday. In the MAC, I might see one or two guys. He said by the seventh or eighth pitcher for Kentucky, I was still feeling like I was facing a top-notch arm, and that's what Turner does. Professional hitting approach, just guides one to the left for another base hit. But to Turner's credit, even though he's facing better pitching consistently in this conference, he continues to get the job done. Yeah, I think he's just a quality hitter. Like you said, he hits to all fields. He's not afraid to kind of take what the pitcher gives him. And again, that's just a seeing eye single right there by Turner. but. Again, his his balance is outstanding. You rarely see him swing a pitch outside the zone and, again, just lets those hands work. See Bobby Wernus handing off the gear. The happiest guy about the dugout switch has to be Bobby <laughs> Wernus. Every time somebody hands him a bunch of gear, he just turns around to a manager. Somebody says, here, get rid of it. He's not accumulating it in a wheelbarrow or a basket. There were times last year he had like five or six different pieces yeah. of stuff all strapped to his body and, Looked like a catcher out there That's at first right. base. Hey, look who's batting cleanup. It's Robert Moore. There's Bobby Wernus. I mean, he's got those hands free. He can jump up and down and make memes on Twitter. I mean, whatever he wants to do, he's not holding gear. Here's the pitch to Robert. That ball is smoked right to second. Hussein is going to get the double play. Hogs have the makings of a big inning alive, and Robert can't hit a ball any harder than that. But the frame ends. We played one. Four, nothing, Little Rock. Robert Moore absolutely smoked the ball, Troy, to win that bottom of the first off the bat. And you were thinking if that's in the gap, it might score two, and a big inning is forthcoming, but it was right to Hussein. Yeah, right on the screws, and just didn't have enough altitude on that last one. And really, no fault to Caden Wallace. He just, that's where a secondary lead took him. So, again, just nice swing by Robert, and he's got to try to find some holes. So, Plyman came on a relief, got the final out in the first. He will face Eldridge Figueroa who, by the way, now has played in every single matchup between these two programs. This is the fourth all-time meeting. He's played in every one of them. Fifth-year guy out of Puerto Rico. Last year started all 50 games. He's going to fight one off and fist it in the center for a base hit, dropping in front of Webb. So here come the Trojans again after getting four in the top of the first. And just really good quality strokes. I like how the Trojans really keep that bat through the hitting zone. Again, you, you hear so much about launch angling guys trying to lift the baseball, and, and you you see that when they have that bat through that bat hitting zone for a longer period of time, they're gonna they're gonna barrel some balls up. And again, it would seem to be the perfect approach tonight with the way the winds might beat down some deep flies. And this is Jordan Hussein again. He walked and scored in the first. Had a 13-game hitting streak a year ago and played in 47 games. You see his numbers this season. Had a stint at Crowder College. Is that Neosho? Yes, it is. All right. Holds those hands low, doesn't he, right around the belt? Kind of gets into that ready position, kind of brings him up about chest high. Like they say about hitters, it's, it's where you end up in getting into the hitting position. Doesn't really matter where you where your hands start, it's where they finish. Well, they start they start really low. Belt, and then he'll raise them up again. 
Off and running is Figueroa. That ball lined to center. Webb can't get there. And then the ball kicks by him, and it's going to go all the way to the fence. Figueroa is going to score. Let's see if Hussein might have a chance. He's going to be waved in, and a late stop sign will force him to slam on the brakes at third. And it's 5 nothing Trojans. I thought maybe Webb might leave his feet to see if he could catch it and get a double play, but Troy almost got caught between steps and in no man's land. Yeah, I think so. I think Braden thought he had a chance on that that baseball off the bat to catch it. Again, great swing by Figueroa. You see the runner taken off right there. And that's just a great job of base running. And watch Webb kind of get caught in between. Right about there you're thinking, okay, can I get it? And it just kind of had some funky spin on it. Just kicked bang. right past, past him. There's no chance that Figueroa wouldn't be able to cruise to the plate. But there was a split second where I thought maybe Hussein might be waved in, but nobody out. You certainly don't want to run into an out at the plate with Lyons and Dickerson due up. That's going to be a single with a two-base error on Webb. So no RBI. But 5 nothing Little Rock. This is the top fielding team in the SEC, and that ball hit well to right field off the bat of Lions. Over is Varnado. He's going to make the catch. Figueroa, or I beg your pardon, Hussein, will not try to score. And again, not wanting to run into an out at the plate. Hussein bluffed. And the Hawks get that big first out without having to exchange it for a run. Really nice throw by right there by Varnado. And again, with that win behind him, he threw a one hop strike right there to Leach. Arkansas is going to play about halfway. That infield is going to play in and try to cut this run down at the plate. So if you're the runner at third and Hussein, you're going to wait till that ball gets through. And this is Dickerson, their big hitter, drove it a run in the first. When do you think the last time was Arkansas was bringing the infield in in a midweek game in the second inning to try and keep the lead from getting any bigger? 1931, okay. probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. They had goats and cattle out in the uh, pasture probably. behind the fence. Now, this is the problem with this lineup, Troy. I mean, you could almost, in a sense, maybe work around Dickerson, their three-hole hitter with first base open, if you felt like it got any easier, four, five, and six behind it. And that's not the case. No, it's not. They have a, a really deep lineup, maybe at the very bottom of the order, but you've already seen a – a double by right, the catcher in the seven, seven hole. So, again, this Little Rock Trojans team, they can swing the bats. Oh. Dickerson was trying to do too much there. <laughs> this was a kid back in 2018, was drafted in the 17th round by the Reds, went to Stetson, played a lot there, 42 games before transferring to Little Rock. See if he doesn't short up that swing right here with two strikes. Little tapper in front of the plate. Hussein's going to try and score. The tag is applied by Dylan Leach. And the Hogs cut down Jordan Hussein. That's just a great play by Miller Plyman right there. Fred, who said pitchers aren't athletic? That is a great play, and you can't do it any better. He took a little peek right there. He saw him coming. And I love the backhand flip. And watch where this ball lands. It's right where the ca the guy's going to slide. He slid right into the tag. He didn't make Leach have to reach for that base runner. Tell you what, as a pitcher, I'd become a lot more athletic, too, if I had a chance to cut down <laughs> one of my Ernie's at the plate. That's exactly right. And here's McWilliams, who popped a third back in the first inning. We talked about this young man his years at D3. You don't see many guys transfer. Coach Curry said about McWilliams, he just finds the barrel. And he's just a guy who can really make great contact at a couple of huge years in summer ball. But how about this? Last year, or a couple of years ago, his last season at Ohio Wesley, and he hit 399 and it lowered his career average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. I right mean, he there. hit 414 in 2018. And you go one for three, and it just takes a bad yeah, big dip. Man, my goodness. And for a big guy like that to have such a compact swing and got a contact and great barrel control, that's amazing. 
First year was at Florida Southern College, then went D3 to Ohio Wesleyan for three years, had the medical hardship last year. He's become kind of the epitome of college baseball with multiple stops, different levels, between Juco and D3 and D1. And He's definitely seen the gamut, hasn't he? He sure has. Had a lot of success. 2-1 pitch, he waved right through that one. Leach couldn't find the baseball. That'll get by him to the backstop. i got to believe that'll be a pass ball and a free base for Dickerson. Hawks can't afford to be giving free bases if they turn into free runs down 5 nothing early. Looked like a breaking ball kind of down and in, and I think Leach just missed that one. There's still two outs, but now that runner, just like you said, is in scoring position. And Arkansas, they can't afford to give up any more runs at this point. The 2-2 on that outside corner, strike three called. McWilliams doesn't agree, the inning in. He's reached base in 22 straight games. To extend that back on Sunday, he had to get hit by a pitch because uh, he was hitless in that weekend. In fact, 3 of 12 against Mizzou. He didn't drive in a run, Troy, but he had a couple of shots into the wind that may have been home runs on any other day. Well, he thought one was a home run and pointed the dugout, and I'm sure <laughs> that there was a discussion about that. Said, hey, son, you better make sure don't do anything to the ball carriers over the fence. Yeah. Hurricane Columbia knocked down that one, but uh, that's a good pitch from Weatherly, who strikes out Lanzilli to begin the second. Fans not happy. This looked like a pretty good pitch, didn't it? Yeah, let's see where this is. Think it's off? Yeah, I think it might be off a little bit. Either way, if you're Lanzilli, you can't do anything with that pitch. You're not going to hit it. It's, it's down and away, just perfect location. I mean, you can't walk that ball and put it in the catcher's mitt with your hand better than that last pitch. Jalen Battle steps in. Jalen right now is riding the longest active hitting streak by a hog of five games. And that pitch has popped up. Let's see how the winds affect this one. McWilliams racing over, and he will handle that nicely. Had to circle just a bit, but... Had a beat on it the whole time, and you can definitely see that Weatherly's got some really good stuff. And I like how he gets ahead of the hitters, and then right there he gets the first pitch of the fastball away, then it comes back to the breaking ball and kind of had battles off, off pace and off stride a little bit. This guy knows how to pitch. McWilliams had to circle the uh, runway for an extra lap or two before he was cleared for landing, but he got there. Here's Kendall Diggs. Yeah, I would say with Weatherly, Again, they were pleased with how he was starting on the weekends, but it felt like they needed some different components in their bullpen, but then it clears him to start in a game like this without feeling like you're throwing a, a freshman or a sophomore or somebody who's not experienced into this mix. Well, I think the thing that Weatherly is able to do, especially early on, he can kind of nibble on the corners because he knows he's got good command and you know, being down 1-0, 2-0, it really doesn't rattle him because he knows he can throw strikes. Digs three for 17. And, oh. and I brag on him, now he's 3-0. That happens every yep. time, right? Every single time. This guy never misses free throws. He always makes the catch. Pretty good 3-0 pitch, and I, I was talking a lot about this in the last few weeks. I don't think I see a 3-0 get-me-over pitch anymore. <laughs> At least Arkansas is not seeing it. You're going to see it at the knees or on the corners. Yeah, they've been really impressive and really been happy with how Weatherly's thrown so far. He walked Diggs right there. but And, again, that's what you have to do sometimes if you're if you're a hitter. If, you, if they're going to give you the walk, just take it. Here's your defense for the Trojans. Williams in center, Soto and Dickerson, the uh, two corners. Aiden Garrett making that start at short. Hussain at second. Seeing a lot of McWilliams at first, Lions at third, right behind the plate. And Drake Varnado getting the start in right field. The IMG product, he was a shortstop there, and I was talking to him about his experiences at IMG. And in his hitting group, right, just the group he hits – BP with every day. There was Tommy Tanks of NC State and Elijah Green, who could be a top four or five <laughs> pick in the draft. That's pretty tough. You get recruited to Arkansas, and you're probably the worst hitter of the three. 
And that's that's no disrespect to Drake Vernado. I mean, when Tommy Tanks and Elijah Green are taking BP, you better off just sending everybody behind the fence than on this side of the fence and retrieving the balls and throwing them back in. He's had six at bats and a couple of hits this year. Playing time's not been easy. We've seen him pinch run, maybe come on and play an inning late in a game. Getting the start tonight, and hey, the Hawks need some hits. We talked about how good this Trojans team swings the bat. Defensively, they've struggled this year a little bit. Coming in this ball game, had 32 errors and fielding 960. So that's something that Coach Curry really wants them to tighten up. But you can definitely see where the the ability of this team is. If you continue to pitch well and hit well, and then you can get kind of sure up that defense a little bit. That's that's a good combination. Yeah, that's when things take off. Two and two to Drake. It's a nice take by Varnado right there again. When you don't get very many at-bats, you want to get your hacks in and being able to lay off that breaking ball down the zone. That's a freshman starting to hit like a sophomore already. Diggs, of course, not running. That's ball three outside. They'll pick behind him at first. And again, I don't know why something like that takes place. Although that's close at second, and Diggs lucky to get in there. He had a hard time once he popped up getting those feet moving and was just about erased at second base. Troy, why are you trying to pick up 5 nothing when Diggs probably isn't stealing? Yeah, I'm not really sure right there. Again, you, you just need to leave him alone. And you saw that McWilliams really didn't have a good opportunity on that, but it, this had to be a great slide by Diggs. Goodness, That's did he make That's really it? close. You could see the shortstop Garrett thought he tagged him. Well, he had a great dive back into first on that pick going to the back corner of the base. This time he went to the inside corner of the base. But that was a good job by second base umpire Manny Gonzalez to get in perfect position for that tag and a good pair of walks for the freshman for Arkansas. It's going to turn this lineup over. Well, it would if Dylan Leach was a ninth, then it would be Caden Wallace. A chance to see if they can kickstart something after the Trojans scored four in the first and a run in the second. The Little Rock scored two runs in the first inning off walks. I mean, they did score four total, but two, the first two were walks. Let's see if Arkansas can't do the same thing. And they did their damage with two outs, most of it. Leach one for 17 with the bat. Knocked in a couple of runs. A little surprised about how deep Williams is playing center field. Agreed. Dickerson in, in right, he's playing in with that you know, wind blowing about 25 miles an hour behind his head. And then Soto's a little deeper into left field, but the ball's going to carry that direction. But a little fist or a little pop up into center field, it looks like it's going to drop. Especially with two outs, it would score a run. I think Williams is probably about 15 about yards yeah. deeper than Webb is when he plays out there. I think so. I mean, that's like normal depth though, with no wind. Nothing in one to Leach. Good swing, but he fouled it right back. Nothing in two. Usually hitters get one good pitch, and I think that's the one that Leach would love back. He had a good rip at it. There's Williams in center field. Great athlete, but he's going to have to cover some ground on a, something that wind's going to knock down. See what Weatherly does, 0-2, and he spikes one in the dirt, and that's going to be a free base for both runners. Diggs will go to third, Varnado to second. Two walks, an E2, and a wild pitch. Not the prettiest inning for the Trojans so far. They have the ability to get out of it right here. Arkansas just love to have one of those seeing eye singles. Yeah, begin this process of maybe getting some runs without the big swing or trying to chip into this deficit for a team that's 18 and four. They had their 12 game winning streak ended on Saturday, but ended up winning the series on Sunday, their 12th straight SEC series win. And that's a wave of a miss. So Hogs will strand a pair in scoring position. So far, so good for Weatherly. He was able to get the K on Dylan Leach to end the inning. Nice job by Weatherly. He looks like he pulled a string, maybe a straight changeup right there at Leach out in front.
quiet night, but a windy one out in the hog pen. See a few adult beverages already out for the evening. Been that type of night, though. The Trojans have plated five runs, and the Hawks left a couple of men in scoring position in the second. So Plyman back out there to work in the third. He's getting a chance for maybe his longest outing as a Razorback tonight. Yeah, I think so. I think DVH and Matt Eisner probably can let him go as long as he can. Tyler Williams hit that off the very end of his bat for strike one. Yeah, that's one way. It's it's not a huge midweek crowd by any stretch of the imagination, but the Trojans have found a great way to kind of take this crowd out of this ball game. I would agree. Let's just kind of hit the hogs in the mouth right out of the shoot. Williams struck out in the first, down nothing and two here. The most athletic position player. There is some swing and miss there, also a little bit of power. Young man from Lilburn, Georgia. That's the hometown of Jeff Francoeur, by the way, Troy, but okay. also Matt Olson, who just uh, got traded back from Oakland to the Braves, signed a big contract extension. And if Jeff Francoeur and Matt Olson from Lilburn, Georgia, don't do much for you, that's where Dominic Wilkins was from. Okay. Basketball player. The human highlight film. Yes, he was. That's a wave of a miss. Boy, Plyman threw three nasty breaking balls to Williams right there, and he never saw him very well at all. Plyman kind of has that three-quarters arm slot and gets on the side of that breaking ball and has a lot of horizontal movement. Pitch I thought was going to hit Williams on the shoulder, then he ended up swinging and missing at it. Soto had a big two-out single. Cash in the second run for the Trojans, and they would score two more in that first. Climbing on a relief of Adamiak, who went two-thirds of an inning. Well, that pitch had some movement to it. And that's the thing as a hitter. You see so many different types of breaking balls. You see the guys that have the more the 12 to 6 that kind of starts at your head and it ends up at your toes. But that one from Plyman, like you said, it'll start on the inside corner. It'll wrap around the whole plate. Same thing again, Troy. Those last two, I think, as a hitter, you tend to give up on that pitch out of the hand thinking it's elevated or high. Absolutely high or inside. And, again, that's what that horizontal movement does. Now you throw that same pitch and start it down the middle and break it off the end of the plate. There it is. That's perfect location. That's three straight strikeouts for Plyman. He's K'd four so far, and that was not a comfortable sequence from Miguel Soto. Boy, you could just tell that's what Plyman was going to go to. And as a hitter, it starts in the strike zone. So you're thinking you got two strikes you got to protect, and then you just are so far out in front. But again, Miller Plyman, he's going to he's going to get some more innings if he keeps throwing like that. I'd say so. Here's Jake Wright, two-run double in the first. How'd you like the breaking balls from Brady Tiger in Columbia? Whew. But the spin rate was almost 3,100. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I said something to Coach Hops today. If he were in the big leagues with that spin rate, where would it rank? He said, the very top. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> the top. So it's, it's pretty good then. That, that's good. You know, It's similar to what Peyton Paulette had last year, but I think Tiger's uh, pitch – is thrown more for strikes. I mean, you can uh, get maybe even better results with his. Yeah, right. Paulette had definitely had some big time spin rate, but you're right. It, it was it was so big, you just couldn't command it. That's the the beauty of Tiger, and he's quickly kind of becoming that closer for Arkansas. I would agree, and a guy who probably will have a chance to start at some point in his Arkansas career. But right now, the need is for him to close, and that's what he did this weekend in Como. Right now, what Arkansas needs Plyman to do is kind of get some outs extend this outing and give his team a chance to try and come back and score some runs at some point. Can he strike out all three this inning? That one's line foul. Outside a third, into the corner. There he is. Brady Tiger, what's he working on right there? Some Doritos? 
That's not healthy for a growing lad. Is that a flat cheese it maybe? That's a monster cheese it. I mean, that thing, one cheese it might <laughs> fill you up. <laughs> that ball's hit well in the gap, left center field. Lanzilli turning and running. This ball has a chance to get up off the fence. Wright's going to have himself his second double of the game. A nice swing by Jake Wright. He hit that one right through the teeth of the wind, and that ball's going to land in the hog pen if the wind wasn't blowing about 20 miles an hour. I was going to say the same thing. This I thought for a juiced. second it might still get out. He really kind of cut that. Watch you get under that baseball and have a lot of backspin on it, and I think that's why it continued to carry through that wind. It's almost like he kind of cut that baseball when he made contact with it. Can we talk about how good his defense is a as a catcher, but boy, he's really swinging the bat well tonight. Won the job halfway through last year and kept it ever since. Here's Garrett struck out to end the first. Five nothing Trojans were in the third inning. Again, this is supposed to be a two game series. It may be tomorrow game scheduled for four. There is a lot of precipitation coming through the night into tomorrow. Good job by Leach to keep that ball from going to the backstop. He saved a base there. Yeah, he really did. That was outstanding because that pitch was really hard to handle. And you can see the athleticism of Leach. And that's a big block because if that guy gets to third base, now Plyman. He's, he's nervous about throwing that ball in the dirt with two strikes. One and one to Garrett. Getting a bit long with that swing, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Just really kind of reaching for that pitch outside the zone. you got to believe his heart, though, beating – Fast tonight, getting this chance to kind of settle in, maybe play a lot of shortstop, but doing so in this park. It's down and out. Is that the changeup? I think it was. Had a lot of run to it. He Plyman threw it earlier in this count to Garrett. That's just a good adjustment by Garrett because he swung at the first one and took that one. Plyman's 2-2. All of a sudden now he's run the count full. I think that was one of those breaking balls that Plyman didn't want to leave out over the plate, and he said, I'll just try to backdoor it. The first base is open. We saw Leach swing through a changeup right here. I think I'd really love to see Plyman come back with that straight change. I think he's going to get a swing and miss if he does. I might just challenge him with a fastball. Let's find out. Three and two. That ball is flared down the line and right. This is trouble. That's a hit. Wright is going to score, and it's now a 6-0 Trojans lead. Wasn't the changeup, and I don't think it was the fastball, was yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was a breaking ball that caught a little bit too much of the play, but give credit to Garrett. He really kept that bat in the hitting zone. I think he was fooled. He's out in front of this pitch, but look at that swing. He keeps it through the zone and extends. And sometimes that's what you have to do as a hitter. You just have to kind of reach and get some great extension. Hit a little flare, but it looks like a rope down the right field line in the book. And just another great job by the Trojans making everything out of those opportunities that they're given at the plate. Figueroa singled and scored last inning. Yeah, you know, you look at what the Trojans have done with two outs. Feels like they've scored at least four of the six with two outs. And Garrett got down in the count, and it felt like Adamiak started to nibble. Mm hmm. Or Plyman, I should Plyman, say. Plyman, yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, the count's full. You give up a base hit. Now it's 6 0. Ball to the strike to Figueroa, the DH batting ninth. And sometimes, like you said, he probably maybe should have gone to that fastball against Garrett because you don't want to speed those batters' bats up 
at the bottom of the order. You know, they're, they're hitting in the bottom of the order for a reason normally. So a lot of times you want to challenge them with that hard fastball. Six runs on seven hits for Little Rock. Garrett will run. That ball hit into the left field corner, bending and going foul. Uh, for a chance, I thought that ball might sneak inside that pole, but I think it finished about 15, 20 feet to the left at yeah, least. Definitely had home run distance. Figueroa got all that one. He barreled that one up. But that win saved Plyman from a two-run homer. Figueroa has yet to hit a home run this season. Um, made a pretty good bid for one right there. Another one popped up. The wind might work this one up on top of the roof. Again, Garrett was running with the pitch. Are you to the point right here? Do you pitch out and try to cut that runner down to second base? I think what I'm in favor of is any pitch that will end this inning. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that means, you know, if you've got a breaking ball here, I think I'd throw it and try and uh, get the K and go back to the dugout, cut your losses. Plyman to Figueroa. He did throw the breaking ball, and Figueroa able to lay off on an appeal. Clint Wheeler says no swing. I think if you're Little Rock right here, you can gamble a little bit. You've got a six-run lead. I'd start the runner. That's a little bit high. The count's gone full. Not a bad pitch right there by Plyman. It wasn't, but again, you see Leach saying something to Jason Blackburn. With two outs, the Trojans have done damage. With two strikes, they have really locked in for the most part. Yeah, I really like their approach so far tonight. Runner going here on 17. That was a College World Series team for Arkansas that year. Wallace lifting one to center. Wynn not helping this one. And Williams <laughs> lost his hat but made the catch. And that's the first out. And I think the one thing he said, you know, he, he didn't downplay it in the sense, you know, it was meaningful when a team like Little Rock is able to get a win against a flagship university in the state. But he also said it signaled that maybe our program is headed in the right direction. More importantly, though, Troy, he believes at that point they were something like two and seven in the Sun Belt. They sit one and five now. They went on a run. It was as if the confidence really snowballed, and they played well the rest of the year. And, you know, he was unsure whether or not this matchup is coming at the right time. One and five in league play. They've gone from six and one to 11 and 10. But there's that possibility, as Braden Webb bats, that if they can hold on tonight, they, they win this game, they pull away and win it. All of a sudden, this team has that, that belief that you don't find in other type midweek games. Well, yeah, when you're playing the number two team in the country, it def definitely speaks a lot of being able to knock them off. And no matter if it's a midweek game or whatever, that, that's what they need. That one smoked to center for a base hit by Webb. Hogs have their third hit of the game. But when you're pressing and the team's not getting that big hit, everybody tries to be the guy to come through with that big hit. In this type of matchup, you become unselfish in the sense, what do I have to do tonight to help our team win a big game? And that alone carries over. I really think that's something that kind of breeds in the dugout. And again, when you have the confidence in your teammates to be, hey, next man up is just as good as me, and I know that they can get the job done as well, that takes a lot of pressure off you. And again, it has you, it gives you better at bats because you feel like you're not having to swing at pitches outside the zone and do too much. Just take that focus off yourself. And there's Turner who singled in the first inning. And he takes a strike at the knees from Jacob Weatherly. Get another first pitch strike by Weatherly. And again, a pitch that's not splitting the plate. That's on the inside corner right under the hands of Turner.
Again, he's up by six. It's like, why are you picking over to first base? It's off the corner. Turner up to 29 hits on the season. Say something nice about Turner, Troy, because after the game, he's going to go back to his apartment. Going to talk with sis or dad, and he's going to rewatch this game. Yeah, he's going to sit there and go, what, what did they say about me? I mean, that's his routine. That's a baseball guy. I almost think between him and Chris Lanzilli, and both are grad transfers, have been the two most consistent hitters for Arkansas this whole entire year. Chopper foul wide to first. Quite well, honestly, you talk about this team, what they did last year, leading the country in – home runs, but really high in on base percentage and slugging percentage, and those numbers have been low this year, and I don't, I don't think we believe that they will stay where they are as far as 14th or 10th in various categories. You wonder what this offense would be like without a Turner or Lanzilli to this point. It would be dramatically different, that's for sure, and these two guys have really stepped up and plugged some holes in this Arkansas lineup. I think there's a sense of calm that comes with experience. Well, it's, it's 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 one thing to get some transfers in to fill some holes, especially maybe defensively. But when you get guys that have, like you said, that much experience and good quality at bats, when they can come in and impact your team instantly, that's what those two guys have done. I think you're going to see that when Jace Borfin comes back from you know his shoulder injury. Now he was taking BP today. It's probably been longer in recovery for him than he would prefer. I think during that Kentucky series, at one point it was Stovall batting second, then Turner and Lancilli. So two, three, and four had never played an SEC game until that point. Webb at first, and Turner will watch ball three miss down and in. And this is really tough for Dave Van Horn because you're down six runs. You really don't want to start your runner and have a strikeout throw out in this situation, but you also don't want to ground into a double play. Got Webb with really good speed at first. I think you almost start him right here. Because those, 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 you have a guy in Turner that runs, you know, average for a catcher, but, you know, he has the ability to ground into a double play, and those are just demoralizing to a team, and you need something positive to happen. Yeah, with his bat-to-ball skills. Yeah, exactly. Hope that he'll put it in play or – Take the walk. Webb will run. And then he swings and misses. And the throwdown is close, but not in time. I think Turner may have chased ball four. Yeah, I definitely and think he did. Webb gets the stolen base. That's just, again, a guy trying to do too much at that at bat. Watch where this pitch is. It's up in the zone. I think this ball's on the first base side of second base. Webb might be out. Mm, that's neck high. Yeah, again, nice job by Garrett coming over and picking that ball out of the dirt. Made a good tag, but it's on the other side of the base. That's bang, bang. Robert Moore hit a seed right to the second baseman, Hussein, with a couple of guys on in the first, and it was a line-out double play. You can kind of hear the Arkansas fans saying, you know, come on, let's get something going offensively. I think the whole entire dugout feels that way at this point. Moore had a couple of hits, and two RBIs, and 11 at bats at Mizzou. Kind of feel like he's about to catch fire. Seems like his batting practices have been really crisp. His at bats have been much better. Not that they were that bad anyway, but again, he, he's a guy that can get on a roll and maybe hit 400 for a month. Yeah, I would second that. It's down here, nothing in two. That Mizzou series they played, I think it was Kylie McDaniel, an ESPN baseball draft analyst, and we've played his cuts from time to time, and he 
projected Robert you know, late first, maybe early second round, and he said maybe that power doesn't project. And I thought, you know, he did hit 16 home runs <laughs> last year. Yeah. He 16. Had, I think 15 were from the left-hand side, and he seems like he's got a little more pop from the right-hand side this year. Again, you can just really tell. That's, you know, that's an easy take right there. It's almost at his feet. But you can tell the difference from his – freshman year to his junior year on just the quality of at-bats that he has. He's been able to work that account and get back into that hitter's type account. I feel like that's where he is right now being 2-2. Two, two. two outs in the inning. Arkansas looking for its first run. They've had a few opportunities, but then again, Little Rock has scored in every inning and had four right out of the gates in the first. Webb at second base. He'll score on anything to the outfield. He's got tremendous speed, especially with two outs. He's going to be off with the swing of the bat. Here comes the payoff. Moore will shoot one fair down the line and left. He just about took that ball out of the catcher's glove, and he's going to have himself an RBI double, and Arkansas is on the board. You talk about letting a ball get deep. That's quite a piece of hitting by Robert Moore. Yeah, what a great two-strike approach right there. And again, you have to be able to sit back on that breaking ball. Watch where this contact's made. That ball's behind him. That is great back control. And to be able to keep that baseball fair, that's incredible. Troy, there's a lot of guys that would take out a teammate on the railing of the dugout with that swing. No, I definitely think so. That just shows about his barrel-to-ball skills. and. That was just an outstanding at-bat by Robert Morgan. He worked from an 0-2 count, got it full, then he got the pitch he wanted. And again, when you're down two strikes, you're almost having to concede, concede the fastball and just try to foul that thing off and sit off speed. And that's what he did. New pitching coach here for the uh, Trojans, paying a quick visit out to the mound. Gets James Leverton. By the way, he came from McLennan Junior College. So he, of course, had Jalen Battles a couple of years ago and also worked for Nate Thompson's brother at McLennan. Yeah, that's really cool. Played his baseball at Texas Tech, so really good baseball school there. I think if you're an Arkansas fan, you just are happy to get on the board in this ball game. I think that's the, that first run is always the hardest one to get. Lancilli struck out looking back in the second. And if you're the Trojans, you, know, you can afford to give up a run here or there. So this, this isn't anything big. You just have to make sure that you don't want Arkansas to get a crooked number in this inning. But a couple balls hit really hard by Robert Moore, the first in the line out and then that one right there. Fouled back and out of play off the bat of Lanzilli. It's nothing in two. I think that's a pitch that Lanzilli wants back. Took a pretty good rip. He just almost kind of sliced that ball. That bat wasn't level through the zone. And that's what happens when you kind of have that angled swing. Margin of error is really slim. It's just the width of the bat. Fouled back to the top of the screen. I like that 0-2 pitch by Weatherly right there. That's a fastball up and out, but might get the swing and miss, but you're not going to get hurt out there. 51 pitches in for Weatherly, trying to get through three innings, maintaining this comfortable lead for the time being. Really big hole for Lanzilli on the right side. Hussein, the second baseman, is almost playing right behind second. Moore's double played at Webb this inning. Lanzilli trying to knock in another run. That ball sent out to right center field, dropping for a base hit. That'll score more. Lanzilli has knocked in another 15 RBIs on the year. It's a 6-2 game. And Lanzilli has been on base every single game this year, 23 straight. 
But Lanzilli really flattened that swing out with two strikes. Watch him reach and get that ball. That, that ball's not a strike. It's off the plate. He still reaches it being choked up. So if he tries to go get that ball, he's swinging through it. If he lets that ball travel, that's a base hit. And again, the speed of Robert Moore, there's no way you're going to get him in second bear, all the way from second to home. And that was Williams deep in center again Yeah, ex there. exactly right. I mean, I don't think he's going to catch no. that baseball, but he might have had to play on Moore at the plate. There's Battles. Popped up in foul territory to McWilliams at first is only time in. And the funny thing, Williams has not moved an inch up in center field. Down and out. We talked about the Trojans not really wanting to give up a crooked number. Well, they've got Arkansas has one now. Again, you're still up four runs. You just want to be able to get out of this inning. This is the point, though, of these innings where the Trojans have been so difficult. Two outs, one out away from the inning inning, and all of a sudden they just keep coming at the Hogs. And now Arkansas in kind trying to return at least a little bit of the favor. One and one the count to battles. Ball's hit well to right field, but playable out there for Dickerson. And they didn't change that batting helmet or that bat <laughs> in any of those five years. Now, if you grew up in Houston, you're probably used to Craig Biggio, and he would slap that pine tar all over that bat or that helmet. And that one popped way up into the air, and Battles will put it away. But, I mean, that helmet he's got on, Troy, that thing, you'd have to scrape the pine tar. I mean, it probably weighs an extra pound or two. Maybe one of those, remember the old roto stripper that you'd hook it to a drill and it had the metal teeth on it? You need that to get that pine tar off of there. I don't even know if there's even a logo on there buried underneath that. The LR I, I is just looking. gone. <laughs> it was tough to see. And there's Nathan Lyons from Bentonville. Just about wore that one. He was the only Trojan to start every game last year at third base at 52 hits and five homers. Including a homer here, and Bob Walker. You'd use that picture pinned on your social media accounts, wouldn't you? I think so. I think I'd be uh, bragging about that one just a little bit. Be there to the end of time. He's coming to hitting 299 right there. That was one of those ones that you made up your mind before the ball was out of the pitcher's hand. Oh, he's way early on that swing. Where you're a hitter, you got to have a short memory. Forget about that when you've got another strike to work with. Chopper toward short. Battles will charge and fire on the run. And Tyrus Lyons, a couple of quick outs, both handled by Jalen. Really love how this Arkansas infield really attacks the baseball when it's on the ground. See those middle infields, especially more in battles or Wallace, you don't have to as much, but. When that ball is hit, boy, they can cover a lot of ground, and they really pick that right hop. They play through it, too. Yeah, they really do. Kind of reminds you of Derek Jeter. Or, you know, you really don't have to show off the arm too much when all your momentum is carrying you toward first base. Noah Dickerson is singled on a run, reached on a fielder's choice. Going to leave those flaps of the batting gloves off. I mean, a lot of guys will – Loosen those, tighten them back up. He's got the flaps going every which direction. Could have hit one foul. So what do you do when you don't undo them? Do you just leave them flat? I down? guess so. Maybe it's just kind of a there they are. A little, bit, I mean, a little things, bit of style there going. Those things look loose. Maybe if he hits a home run, he might have to be like Jeffrey Leonard with the one flap down well, as you round the bases. Flaps going in every direction. Pulls out in the air to center, and for the first time tonight, Little Rock has not scored in an inning. In fact, they went down in order against Cole Ramage. Three and a half complete on a windy night in Northwest Arkansas. Hey, Friday night, the SEC Network features the number two ranked baseball team in the nation. You know who that is, Hawk fans, Arkansas. We'll host Mississippi State, first game of the big three-game series here at Bomb Walker. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, also available on the ESPN app. 
Arkansas five and one in the West. They lead by two games over Auburn, LSU, A&M, Mississippi State. I think America's darling Mike Rooney will be on the call in that game. And here's Kendall Diggs leading off the bottom of the fourth. You know, the one thing about last year, Mississippi State, that series obviously with Arkansas was in Starkville. The Hogs swept that series. They won all three, which allowed them to win the division, win the SEC West, and win the regular season title. But then the Bulldogs win the national championship. So who gets bragging rights out of all that? I think you got to say the national I think championship. So too. But yeah, that was probably one of the best series Arkansas played. It really pitched well, hit, hit really well. That's a skimmer right to Garrett at short, and there's one out. I don't know how many Razorbacks you talked to, but I, I had several that said they couldn't even watch the College World Series, but they really turned it off once it got to the end because they're watching teams that they defeated. Yeah, that, that, that was really tough for this ball club, and I think that that's why they were really chopping the bit when fall season started. Maybe why a guy like a Jalen Battles comes back to school and has some unfinished business. I think it's a lot of fun once you get to the regionals and supers, and of course, always the possibility of Omaha's Varnado bats. It's interesting, though, in the polls, Arkansas has been second. They've been fourth. I think they were fourth by Baseball America. Tennessee in the coaches' poll was in first place in 30 of the 31 votes. I mean, they have run roughshod. I think they would take down the Pirates or a few teams right now. <laughs> <laughs> Looking pretty impressive. Doesn't hurt to have a guy that comes out of the bullpen throwing 100 plus. Friday night starter is legit too. That's a skimmer towards Hussein who throws out Varnado. A couple of outs here in the fourth inning. How about the fact though on that coach's poll, the SEC has seven teams represented and the ACC has seven teams represented. A couple conferences kind of just chewing up all those spots. Here's Dylan Leach. Leach struck out his only time in. Six two Trojans lead. They've led throughout after a four run top of the first. Arkansas finally got on the board last inning in danger of going in order here against Weatherly. There's a chopper towards short, and this will end the inning. we got a big recap coming up on the Lambs at a game. The Campbell Camels with 10 home runs as McWilliams bats. By the way, in that game, Troy, there was one gentleman who had two homers in an inning, Connor Denning. The team had two grand slams in one inning. Team had three grand slams in the game. They hit almost 3,600 feet of home runs, which, by the way, is about the distance from Baumwalker Stadium to Bud Walton. And if you're thinking, well, maybe Presbyterian didn't pitch inside. They also got hit nine <laughs> times by pitches. <laughs> wow. McWilliams lifting this one to left. He's got good power. This ball's got a chance. He's got himself a home run. McWilliams shoots one into the bullpen. And that's the extra point. He's showing off his bicep, and it's a 7-2 Trojan lead. Really Wind nice swing. Be darned. By, yeah, great swing by McWilliams right there. And that's the only place you're going to hit one out is almost to that left field line. And that left-handed hit, McWilliams knew he hit it well. You see that little bit of that point right there. You see that two-strike approach, no stride by McWilliams. That's just all muscle. How about this reaction? Yeah. It's like, I'm a big boy. I, I juiced it. Brings up Tyler Williams, who struck out both times in. Yeah, I would say those oddities were pretty unique. I, I think before the weekend even took place, we had a cancellation. Northwestern wasn't able to go to Notre Dame to play the Fighting Irish because of bus, bus availability. Yeah, <laughs> they couldn't find a bus driver. <laughs> now, if that would happen in a football game, do you see Coach Fitz, someone calling him up, and Evanston is saying, hey, you can't go to Camp Randall today to play the Badgers because we don't have a bus or series of buses? Would, would that happen? It's like Williams. you just get like rent some vans or something. Nice pick over there by Goodness. Turner. Wow. Third time Williams has struck out, but it took a great snag by Turner and a big exhale after handling that one. This is one of those ones that you just kind of swipe at and you're kind of, hey, Mom, look what I just found. That is a tough pick. 
That's a guy that doesn't play first base very much. That's why he had that big exhale. And it brings up Soto. Knocked in a run back on that four-run first. I think we need producer Paul to put that feature together every week, don't you? With all That's the outstanding. That's, that was a lot of work by our crew and great job right there. That's some fun stuff. Great job, Paul. I think sometimes we're so focused on this Arkansas team for good reason. They're always in the top five of the country, the SEC, that you forget that there's so much else going on around the country and so many crazy, wacky accomplishments. Mm, Soto that wears that one. Caught him on the hand, and you just hope he's yeah. okay. Boy, there's, there's not a lot of protection right there on your hand. You see some guys have some batting gloves that almost have like a little bit added padding on the back of the hand. That's the true test right there is if you can have any grip strength. That's a tough kid in Soto. But, yeah, you're right, Brad. It's, you know, I'm definitely a huge college baseball fan, and I'd love to see what's going on around the league and especially crazy type plays and great plays, great hitting, and that's uh, <laughs> that whole weekend had a ton of it. And we think about what the SEC Network and SEC Plus has meant towards this conference with all the games being able to be televised or streamed, but it's also the coverage from these websites, D1 Baseball and others, that have given the college game a different platform than from just five, six years ago, certainly a decade ago. It's Jake Wright, who's doubled in two runs, also scored, so two doubles and a big night working. As he smoked the ball twice. Young man who started at Murray State College in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. Not sure if he stopped by Blake and Gwen's big ranch, but uh, right down the road. I'm sure he did. Uh, we can't. <laughs> I mean, Blake and Gwen are probably tired of those Murray State kids crawling through the wilderness to come find their big ranch. I think that was a big run right there for Little Rock. You know, they, they came out, they scored four in the first, put a run up in the second and the third, and then Arkansas came back and scored two. I think it's big for them to come back and continue to add to that lead, not just stay stagnant. Agreed. And I don't think we're anywhere close to being done tonight for maybe either team. At some point, thinking something might kind of settle in here. You know, going back to that compilation, Troy, I think that series, though, with Tennessee at Ole Miss, I don't know if that caught anybody by surprise, but Ole Miss and Arkansas would seem to be the two teams competing in the West, and right now the Rebs are 2-4. and four. Yeah, I think so. Uh, when you run into a buzzsaw like Tennessee, that'll change it in a hurry. Wallace will play through that baseball nicely and retire right for the first time tonight for the second out of the inning. Can we talk about how these Arkansas infielders really attack the baseball? It's a great job by Wallace to go get that ball and deliver it where even if your throw's a little bit off, the runner's 10 feet away from the bag. You know, that allows that first baseman, if the throw's a little bit high, to be able to go up and get it and still come down and beat the runner. I think sometimes some of these middle infiel infielders altogether – you know, try to make all those plays of bang, bang at first base. Just get rid of that baseball and give yourself a little bit of leeway, a little cushion. Here's Aiden Garrity. Singled to right field in the third to knock home a run with two outs. His second college RBI. And I was wondering, though, with that Western division, if – Maybe we underestimated or overestimated some of the teams. I felt like LSU was going to hit well enough to overcome maybe some defense or some pitching, and they got off to a really slow beginning of conference play. Then they turn around and win the last two games at Florida. I just think so. I think there's so much depth in this in this league, and I'm, I'm not really sure if anybody's clicking right now except for Tennessee. Two strikes on Garrett. He's going to wave and miss, although Leach will have to throw that down to Turner. This time he didn't bounce it. 
and the inning ends. But Troy Canyon McWilliams hit one a country mile for the Trojans. Yeah, big fly right through the teeth of the wind. Just kind of sliced it and let that wind just push that ball into the bullpen. Well, Alabama's Pro Day is tomorrow afternoon on the SEC Network and ESPN app. Offensive lineman Evan Neal, linebacker Christian Harris are just some of the top players looking to showcase their skills for NFL scouts and front office personnel. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Troy, I know you and producer Paul were going to get together, and I think your homework was you were going to watch the Mizzou spring game or the Old Miss Pro Day and then report back. So what do you – have after yeah, all that. I, I think I think I'm gonna have to say I didn't do okay. my homework. Well, wouldn't be the first. <laughs> Can time. you blame me? No. Nope, on either uh, one of those. Now the Alabama one might be worth watching. If you say so. Here's your game summary. Trojans with that four-run top of the first inning. McWilliams had the solo homer to make it a 7-2 game, and the Hogs still have work to do. Back to the top of the lineup in Caden Wallace, then Webb and Turner, and Weatherly soldiers on. Again, he's. Just doing what he needs to do. Talking about Weatherly. Talking about this is pitch 66. 41 strikes, 24. That's 25 balls at this point. So he's he's not just pounding and filling up the strike zone, but he's always right around just kind of nibbling at those corners. And I think that's why he's been able to stay in this ball game. Well, it's a single and fly to center. Yeah, I think whenever you face this Arkansas lineup, whether they are clicking on all cylinders or not, staying away from the heart of the plate and working the parameters of the zone might be a good formula for success. Well, you can see right there, those, there's two fastballs in the outside corner. Both of them are sprayed foul by Wallace, who is, you know, he's, he's a big league hitter. He just is. And that's just not giving in. And just a tribute to Weatherly just to be able to have a lot of command. Now you have the opportunity to throw that breaking ball off the outside plate because you've thrown two fastballs on the corner. Or you can also even go up in the zone with that fastball. What up and out. Wallace would not expand. Two and two. Wallace coming off a weekend at Mizzou where – Went five for 12. Wallace hits one in the air, right center field and deep. This ball's got a chance. That ball's gone. Into the wind, Caden Wallace hits a line drive over the right center field fence. His fourth home run of the year. He barreled that baseball up. That ball's absolutely smoked. That's going to be off the scoreboard if the wind's not blowing in 25 miles an hour. That's a pitch out and away from Wallace. Look at the great extension, but how he was able to hit that ball for a home run, like we talked about, Brett, he let that ball travel just a little bit he deeper. Did. If he catches that out in front, that's a little ground out to shortstop. That ball just disappeared at some point. That's a big league approach right there by Caden Wallace. There's Braden Webb. Singleton scored last time up in the third. Again, we talked about how deep this Little Rock outfield is playing. All outfielders are playing probably normal depth, and there's a couple pitches called on Webb that are borderline, but Weatherly gets the call. Been a pretty good zone, I thought, all I really night long. I think so. Long. But uh, got these fans worked up just a bit. If Wallace is Homer. Didn't. I would say there were some umpiring struggles in that weekend series at Mizzou, watching a few of those games on television. They got for, paid by the replay, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, for, for both plays. Yeah, I think they had a world record on replays. It felt like there was about 20 a game, and it really you know slowed down the pace of play. Two strikes on Webb. Fought that one off, and this will be a real easy play for McWilliams. And Webb retired for the first out in the Razorback fifth inning. It's a frustrating A.B. for Braden. 
almost looks like Sean Casey over there at first, doesn't it, with <laughs> Nick Williams? <laughs> sure does. And just tremendous numbers for not Michael Turner. Talk about a guy that looks relaxed at the plate. He's just thrilled to be out from behind the plate tonight. Watch him as the pitch gets ready to come to the plate where that top hand, he'll just wiggle those fingers a little bit. And I like that. That's, that's just one way to not grip that bat too hard. You have to have loose hands to have a quick bat. That's in. Can you see it with that top hand, yeah. that little wiggle? I never was quite that dramatic, but I just kind of, each hand I just kind of grip it and, and release it a little bit. That's a serious wrap, though, he's got on that bat. He's got that thing taped up and got some good grip. Got every adhesive thing he could possibly think of between that grip, the batting gloves, probably a lot of pine tar on that. He's nothing like Noah Dickerson with the flaps and the batting gloves no. loose. He's got those ratcheted down, doesn't he? Wonder when he lets go of the bat, the bat doesn't stick to his <laughs> gloves. 3-0 is high, and Turner was not at all pleased with King in the uh, third inning, but accepts that walk, and the Razorbacks need base runners here in the fifth and uh, going forward. We've got the guy up for Arkansas that's probably hit the ball harder than anyone else, both at-bats, is Robert Moore. Roberts hit the ball extremely hard twice, once into a line-out double play, and then had the opposite field double and RBI in the third inning. You just feel like he's getting something middle in that he's going to drive it even through this wind. Continues to choke up on that bat. He had one in the Kentucky series on Sunday. We're off the bat. I think you and I both thought that thing's gone, even with the wind, and it got knocked down. On a neutral day, that thing's probably way up off the building or off the screen in front of the building. Good pitch for a strike as Weatherly approaches 80 now in the pitch count. I think that's, a, that's the one that Robert may have wanted back. Down and in, those lefties usually like to golf that down and in pitch. Lifted back and out of play. Another game of the series tomorrow. Yeah, just a yeoman's job by Weatherly for the Trojans. Again, he's just been a grinder out there on the mound. No, I would agree. And, and Troy, the thought with that game tomorrow is, I mean, it's supposed to rain all through the night, you know, about 100% chance. We hope that it'll break to be able to play the game at 4. The Trojans will bust back tomorrow. Then they'll go to Troy early Thursday morning. And that one's going to clip Robert, and he'll take his base. You know, we've seen so many games. In fact, we were here Sunday when a game for Wednesday was already postponed because of weather. And sometimes you start to think about whether or not a game can be played because it would affect how you're going to pitch tonight, whether you might have all hands on deck rather than having to save for nine innings tomorrow. Oh, I think 100%. And uh, you can't assume you're not going to play that game tomorrow, but... You know, if I'm Little Rock, I'm playing for the victory. No I'm, doubt. I'm, I'm throwing the kitchen sink at Arkansas right here. Big opportunity for the Hogs. Again, still down four, but you want to continue to chip away at that lead. You know, if you're the Trojans, you've got a guy at the plate in Lanzilli that seems like everything he hits is hard, and you just, again, if you're a Trojan fan, you want something hit hard at one of these middle infielders and try to roll two in this situation. Lenzilli had that RBI base hit in the third inning, extended his reach base streak to 23 straight games every single game this year. Gregory, another who's up near 20 this year and has a combined streak going back to last year of something like 24, but Zach's not playing tonight. Turner at second, more at first. That's in around the hands of Lanzilli. Had to bring those hands back to his body. Brett, watch Hussein, the second baseman right here. He He's playing up the middle. It's definitely double play depth, but, well, then we're going to have a visit to the mound. I 
That's James Leverton, the pitching coach right here for the Trojans. I think the Trojans, A, want to see whether they get through this inning. But again, one big swing by Lanzilli or the Hogs would turn that early 6 nothing lead into a much tighter contest. And yeah, there's, there's some action down there in the Trojans' bullpen. I think that's Matthew Davis warming up, number 29. I think he just kind of got up and started throwing. Remember that new pitching coach for Little Rock replaced R.D. Spees, who we saw in the first series of the year. He went back to uh, reunite with a friend of his at Illinois State. And by the way, the Redbirds took down Purdue, and Purdue was the lone undefeated team a couple of weeks ago when they were 15-0, and, and Illinois State got that one. Yeah, Purdue was rolling. Purdue had an ex-Razorback, Curtis Washington Jr., that's having a big year for them. A boiler up. That one smoked, foul outside of third. Boy, Lanzilli can bear up some baseballs now. Some guys just have a knack for hitting the ball hard, and that's Chris Lanzilli. Two and one the count. I think Lanzilli could see another breaking ball right here, even being 3-1. After you hit a shot on a fastball like he did foul. Hitters count, that's in. Now the bases are loaded. Oh, free base runners for Arkansas. That's a walk, hit by pitch, walk. That would be the formula, not only to get the beer hats out and on, but also to maybe give the Hawks a chance with one big inning to climb back into this. That's a new beer hat. It's got a little say. crack in the, Can you the see? glass oh, there in the you mug. Go. I was wondering how he could see through that. He's got the whole shirt, too. He's so pleased with himself, he can barely stand. <laughs> He's bringing your A game right there. Yeah, I would the say so. Base is loaded tribute. I like the guy in the background right there. He's got the baseball hat and the beer hat on top of the baseball hat. See the bills sticking out right there? That is a lot of work. Battles has popped to first, fly to right. My goodness, that was a good pitch to hit. I almost think Battles was thinking, okay, try to work this count a little bit, and sometimes you get the best pitcher of your at-bat on the first pitch. Bases full of hogs with one out in the fifth inning. Again, Weatherly trying to nibble. I like that approach right there to see if Battles is going to expand that strike zone. Well, the Hawks have struggled in a lot of offensive numbers, hitting 300 with the bases loaded. See if that will continue. You saw Battles call timeout right there, but he took his hand off the bat. That's where I think a lot of times you're not guaranteed that the umpire is going to give you time. So keep both hands on the bat. You can say time, but you might not get it. Pitch bends down and out. And good quality take. Those two last two pitches by Weatherly are not bad pitches, especially the fastball before that. Give him credit. He's really trying to work battles. And again, but battles is doing just a better job at the plate, laying off those pitches outside the zone. That's well placed. Definitely a pitcher's pitch right there. I think it caught the corner. But again, as a hitter, you, you just can't do anything with that pitch. Yeah, you're just hoping that doesn't get called a strike. 
Now you have, definitely have to think about Weatherly really hasn't pounded that inside corner on Arkansas hitters. So if I'm Battles, I'm looking, I'm looking the other way. I'm trying to shoot something to right field right here. Big 2-2 pitch. Rip to left, that's a base hit. Moore got a late break, he'll go to third and stop. Everybody moves up a base. Battles has knocked in a run, and the Hawks are within three. Yeah, that ball was a line drive through the infield, and so Robert Moore at second base, he has to freeze, much more freeze right there. He wanted to make sure that ball wasn't a line drive double play. And once it goes through, that's why Nate Thompson had to put the stop sign up. But really good quality at bat by Jalen Battles. Chris Curry now is going to make the mound visit, bringing the hook with him. And his teammates are talking to Weatherly, encouraging him on the job he did. He wasn't able to get through five innings for a chance to be a winner. He's given his team a chance to win. But the Hawks have the makings of a big inning alive. We'll get to be the new pitcher. When you but having a left-handed pitcher in there. It's interesting. Dix has walked and also grounded to short. I, I think the one thing he wants out of Kendall one way or another is to find a way to at least get another run in with more, but see if he can do something to keep this momentum charging with two runs already home. Well, the report on Smith is a lot of sliders to left-handers, so Diggs is going to have to think up the mill the other way. Now you were wondering if maybe he might try and get on top of one and spike it. That was a stop by Wright. We talked about how good Wright is behind the plate. Up for the Buster Posey catcher, best catcher in college baseball. Got to love being on that watch list if you're Jake Wright. Moore at third, Lanzilli at second, battles aboard at first. That's a pitch to hit there. Diggs took it for a strike. I think that's a take by Diggs, not called from the dugout. DVH, he'll, he'll let those guys swing 2-0, but a lot of times not 3-0. But if the scouting report is you're going to get a lot of sliders, I get a fastball, I'm not taking that one. Sure. Or that one, too. Or that one, either. Because guess what you're probably going to get to see here on 2-2. Now, if I'm the runner at third base, I'm thinking, hey, this, this slider might be in the dirt. This is an opportunity to try to score on a ball in the dirt. But again, you're down three runs. There's a lot of baseball left to play, but got to be on your toes. Smith against Diggs. First batter for Smith in relief of Weatherly, who was getting a lot of handshakes by his teammates in the dugout when he left the game. Little Fister, maybe not a double play bouncer. The Trojans will try and get two. There's no out at second base. They didn't get an out. Great hustle by Battles to get down to second on a slow roller. And the Hogs have scored another, and the bases are still loaded. What a great job by a senior in Jalen Battles. Look how far he is off the base. And again, he just got to that base. That, that's not even close, and good hustle by Diggs as well. Yeah, that last shot was the one that showed the big lead he had in order to make that a possibility. Our umpires are conferring. Well, I think it all started with McWilliams, the first baseman, how far behind the runner at first he was playing. I mean, I know you've got a left-handed batter up in Diggs, has a, you know, more of a pull-type hitter, propensity to hit that ball to the right side. But, again, that allowed Jalen Battles to have a monster secondary lead, and that's how he beats this ball at second base. I'm not really sure what they're reviewing because both guys were easily safe. Something I'm missing, Brett? Well, as we found out earlier this year, there may be multiple aspects of this. One, the play at second, and then was there a slide or something? Was there some contact? And, and I don't know if that was the case. We'll get a, a look at it again. I mean, I think Battles just slides and pops up. I mean, it's not like he tried to slide into the – Second baseman. Let's see if anything, it's Battles slide into second base and was there contact. Look how far Battles is off of second base right there. And again, he's definitely safe, right? He's safe, but does he slide and does that hand come up? Mm. 
That's what they might be looking no, at. No, I would agree. I and mean, we saw this earlier this season here in this ballpark. Watch that left hand. He slides with it up. And then does it get in the throwing path? There's no contact made, but there's definitely the hand definitely comes well, let's up. Let's see the throw to first and just refresh my memory what took place because Hussein was trying to navigate the runner and his throw was just late. I think there should stand, but we've seen a couple of crazy situations. Yeah, we really this have. Year. I, it's almost to the point where whatever makes sense is doesn't end up being the call. Now this is looked at here by this crew rather than going back to Birmingham with some assistance. Well, I can tell you what, if if you're a guy like like I was, when that's why these guys wear that big oven mitt out there because you have the tendency to, there you go, they're safe, but you have the tendency to jam that wrist in the ground. So he'll, he, you throw your hands up is how they teach you to slide, and I think that's what Battles did. I don't think he was trying to get in the path of the runner. Well, the other part of that is if you're out, you may slide through the base because you're not concerned about staying on it. If you believe you're safe as he was, you're trying to stay in contact with sure. that base, and there might be a pop-up version rather than sliding by it. I think that's a really, really good point, Brad. Well, the Hawks got a break, though, in the sense, and, I, and obviously battles earned it. That'll be a fielder's choice and an RBI, so not a hit for Diggs. But, again, the bases stay loaded. Now you get the right-hander, Varnado. Just a base hit could tie, and an extra base hit could give the Hawks their first lead of the game. Or a wild pitch will make this potentially a one-run game. Lanzilli got a late break, and he still scores without a play in the wild pitch. And the wheels haven't fallen off the wagon yet, but they're a little bit loose right now in this, this strange inning. We think about how all these runs have scored for Arkansas, walk, Hit by pitch, walk. Those are free base runners, and all three have come around to score. So while the Trojans had a four-run first, Arkansas has put four on the board here in the fifth. And, and again, Troy, now there's no possibility of the double play, and you have to maybe bring your corners in a little bit to try and cut down what could be the tying run. And that's exactly what the Trojans have done. The third baseman, first baseman in at the corners, and you feel like that these free base runners have just shot themselves in the foot. There's a chopper that is foul. Nate Thompson was right there, as was Bradford Polk, and Nate was pointing as if it went over the base. <laughs> Definitely hitting foul ground. Bradford Polk was in perfect position to make that call. Well, we've seen that several times tonight by these umpires. They, they really do such a good job, but the biggest thing is at this level, they get in position to make the right call. Drake has walked and bounced out to second. He's got one RBI in the college ranks. Got a lot of opportunities here, and he waved through that 76-mile-an-hour curve. So I think if you're Varnado in this situation right here with two strikes, again, you, you kind of have to give in to the fastball and look off speed, but you've got to see that breaking ball up in the zone. You don't want to chase it down in the dirt. So you want to swing at the one that starts at about the letters and ends up at the knees. Battles to third, digs at second. That was well placed, and it just did miss. That's, That's a good two-strike pitch. Really good pitch by Smith right there. Coach Curry jumped out of the dugout, and he pointed. He said, was that down? Was it out? We've seen that pitch called by Jason Blackbird, the home plate umpire, several times in this game. I've liked his zone, though, didn't I? I really have. He's been really consistent. I think as a hitter, that error pitch, that's all you can ask for. I mean, Tiger got a couple of calls the other day at Mizzou that I swear weren't close to Oh, strikes. no. They were, they were well off the plate. Pitches that wrapped around home plate, no backdoor breaking balls. As a hitter, you'd lose your mind. And there's a fan that had a souvenir for a split second before he finds a youngster. I give that guy an A for finding a young kid to uh, give that baseball to. Kid's got a smile on his face. I think that's the right approach by Varnado right there. Just spray that ball to right field. That's not close, and the count's gone full. It's also ignited this crowd tonight. I think they're off their basketball high because they were subdued in that series against Kentucky. Yeah, they kind of had their minds somewhere else, didn't they? Yeah, they were splitting their attention. Here's a payoff. That ball's ripped to left. That's a base hit. Battles will score. Diggs is being waved in. The throw from McWilliams is headed to the plane, and it's going to be in time to gun down Diggs. 
The Razorbacks tie the game. They don't take the lead. And Diggs gets up slowly. What a throw from left. That was Soto with the throw. And we've seen Arkansas challenge outfielders all non-conference late, Troy, because most of them can't throw. This, though, however, was a really good throw. Yeah, that was a great job by Soto. Got rid of the ball in a hurry. And the accuracy right there, great job by Wright to hang in there and take that contact and hang on to that baseball. Boy, it almost came out of the glove. He snow coned that thing at the end. You can see Diggs kind of twisted an ankle right there on that slide, but great sure job by Soto. Uh, Varnado did take second on the throw home. Two outs in the inning. The Razorbacks have played at five runs, and they've come from six down. And Leach batting right-handed to 0 for 2. will swing and foul one back. So each team has lost a runner at the plate. Boy, Dylan could really use a base hit here in an RBI. I know the Trojans would love to end this inning. Talking to DVH, he feel like, feels like that Leach is a better right-handed hitter than a lefty, which he doesn't get as many opportunities. Did he spin off that thing? Yeah, kind of swung over that, kind of got on that front heel. Trying to pull that breaking ball. That's where you got to try to shoot that thing to right field. Again, it's real easy to hit up here in the booth, but that's kind of the mindset and approach you have to have, especially with two strikes. You got to think definitely the ball the other way. Knocked down by Wright. Kept that ball in front of him. Great speed at second base in Varnado. Like you said, we've seen him pinch run several times this season already. So he gets a base hit to the outfield. You think he's going to score. Seven runs, nine hits for Arkansas. Seven runs, eight hits for the Trojans. And by the way, we're in the fifth inning. I tried to bring that ball down <laughs> into the zone. That was a great effort. He gets E for effort. That thing looked like it was a foot out of the zone. He brought it back down. Tried to catch that thing close to the body to make it look like it was closer than what it was. He didn't get crossed up, did he? I might have because he went up for that baseball and had to come back down again. There's a runner at second base, so he could be off on the signs just a bit. Have you seen the new system they're using in the uh, big league spring trainings to kind of get away from signs? I haven't. What are they doing? Well, you never start a story with two outs and two strikes, so I'll see if Leach can continue it. It is it's unique. I don't even know how to process the whole thing. And that will end the inning. More time to come on that one. But the Hogs get uh, five runs, Troy, in the inning, and it started with Caden Wallace. Yeah, big fly by Caden Wallace right there. And again, I think that's where he hits the baseball the best is when he's driving the ball to the opposite field. This game's knotted up at seven. Oh, we played a lot of baseball, and there's a lot left. And how about that line score? Identical totals, runs, hits, and error. Well, that's very unusual. Arkansas going to go with their fourth pitcher of the night, Evan Taylor. He's kind of like that left-hand specialist that they like to bring in to face left-handed hitters, but he's been really successful this season. That was a conversation in the offseason the fall that DVH kind of challenged Taylor and said, hey, we need you to step up, and he's really done that this season for the Hogs. And there's his numbers. He's about to face 9-1-2. and two. So for the Trojans, at one point, they had a 6-0 lead, a 7-2 advantage, and back to even. Taylor ready to go. Eldridge Figueroa. Single and score, part of a one for two night. Gonna show Bunt back towards the mound. Taylor threw a fastball to first. He had to. Figueroa got down the line in a hurry. Well, he pinned that ball into the ground, too, because he was in danger of maybe kind of twisting to throw to first and possibly missing the baseball, and he wasn't about to leave it there in front of him. 
And that's how they teach those those pitchers to go get that baseball. If you have to barehand it, you jam that hand and then pin that ball to the ground so you don't miss it. That was just picture-perfect execution by Evan Taylor. There's Hussein in that batting helmet we didn't get to show you before. I mean, can you see a logo on that thing? <laughs> Barely. I think he's got pine tar on the ear flaps. Just in case he doesn't have enough on top, if you want to reach down to the side of the helmet, I think he's got some, doesn't he? All the way through that bill. I think you need like a trash bag to be able to put that helmet into your baseball bag. Yeah, because you don't, you don't want, want that it, thing touching you anything you else. No, not a glove, not batting gloves, anything. If I had to bet, there's a Craig Biggio influence on I'm that. I'm sure there is. I'm sure he watched some Biggio on Houston TV. North Shore High School product in the Houston area. Probably know more for football than baseball, but uh, the Saints had a nice run here in Little Rock. Coach Curry called him our foxhole guy, and, and a guy who's won that award multiple times. He's the guy you'd like to have in a foxhole if you needed some help. I think he said, this was a great line. There's a dribbler foul. You need somebody to bunt, need somebody to slide, need somebody to help you change your tire in the parking lot? <laughs> He's there for you, right? <laughs> be Jordan Hussein. That's a good line. The guy you call up to help you move. Right. That's that's the true friend right there. Wasn't there an issue with Arkansas when they had one of those weather storms, and I lose track. There's been so darn many that somebody slid off the road and DVH dropped in the line. Well, we had to go get a few, and that was our – team bonding experience to help a few guys out of the ditch <laughs> as Hussein will take strike three it's probably the Floridians or maybe the Californians yeah just don't try to attempt to drive in the snow we'll come get you now number six, Nathan Lyons. so far so good for Taylor here's Nathan Lyons just looks like a hitter, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. Just locked in. I kind of like that bat laying flat behind him. To me, it's it's easy to get that bat from that position into a flat swing going through the zone. Because you see those guys with that bat straight up and down, a lot of times they'll drop that back shoulder. Taylor's going to have another play. There's another fastball to first. Fourth home run of the year. So when you talk about home runs leading this team, Wallace now with four, Webb with four, Turner with four. For a team that hit 109 a season ago. Think about the long ball, Troy. And I you know it's a part of the DNA of this team, and really I think in this conference. Coming into the game tonight, if I would ask you how many Arkansas flyouts compared to groundouts? In other words, would you think there'd be more groundouts, more flyouts? How do you think that ratio would break down? Yeah, I'm going to say they have almost two to one flyouts to groundouts. Well, here's a groundout. Maybe not. Garrett can't handle it. Wildness will reach. That was going to be an interesting throw from Garrett, and he couldn't field it cleanly. All night long. The infield for the Trojans have been playing hitters to pull, and Garrett, he just has to go a couple steps to his right, and I think he has time to make that play just because of the positioning, but again, it was deep at short. He knew how well Wallace runs. Braden Webb, the batter. Well, it's not two to one, but it is considerably more flyouts and groundouts. 22 more flyouts than groundouts over the course of the season. Now, a team like Auburn and Florida and Georgia, Alabama, all very much in that exact same category. The one that has the most, <laughs> the biggest difference, <laughs> you're going to guess this one without a problem, Tennessee. Yeah. They have about 70 more flyouts and groundouts, and if I played in that park, I'd try and launch two. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a home run hitter's park. It's definitely for sure. Cozy. There's only a handful of teams that actually have more groundouts than flyouts in this conference, and it's pretty close. Vandy maybe by 14. Missouri as about 12. Shows you how this uh, conference loves to launch, right? Yeah, I think that's the type of hitter they recruit. Hit the ball on the ground, they're going to assume you're out. And Wallace reached on the air, and now he's going to take second base on the wild pitch. 
Uh, and the go-ahead run is in scoring position for a Razorback team that has not led in this game at any point. Yeah, free base runners last inning really hurt the Trojans. And right here, you feel like that that run right there is going to score. Get no outs runners on second base. And again, it was a air and then a wild pitch. Webb looking for a second hit of the game. That's on the corner for a called strike. Be curious with this velocity from Davis. I mean, this looks like a big time arm. Sometimes I'm wondering in these non-conference games if teams don't intentionally go in the other direction from a velocity standpoint. Yeah, I think so. Again, with with Davis right here, I think he's going to be like a reliever in the SEC, but there's a lot of times we've seen those slow arms have given, given Arkansas some trouble. I mean, that phrase, below the hitting speed, is one that, well, grambling, there was one time I think they just shut the radar <laughs> gun off in the ninth because the kid was fading it in there at like 58 yeah, miles listen, an hour. It was, it was below 60. I mean, the ball was going harder from the pitcher back to the mound than from whence it came. Count's gone full to Webb. Nobody out here in the sixth. That ball's ripped to left. Will it get down? Yes, it will. Wallace stopped, and then the ball was misplayed by Soto, and he will score, and Arkansas takes the lead on the single on the bobble. Wallace got a great break. He wanted to score. Nate Thompson stopped him, and about the time he threw up the stop sign, then Soto had the bobble. Well, I think that comes back to the throw Soto made earlier. You got no outs. Great break by Wallace. You can see the stop sign right there, because it's a one hopper to Soto. He threw a dart the last time. And again, Wallace is thinking he's going to score, and he puts on the brakes. And then really quickly, that's a great job by Wallace. <laughs> he kind of stop and start again. But No, you're exactly right. It was You don't want to make that out of the plate. Soto's already thrown out a runner at one point. But you see Nate Thompson, he's all of a sudden, go, go, go. And Wallace is saying, well, you just told me to <laughs> stop. <Yeah. laughs> no, no, go, go. <laughs> well, we've got a pitching change. So the velo from Davis didn't last long. Hogs have a lead back in the moment. So that was an E7. I mentioned earlier there are seven SEC teams in the top 25, and Mississippi State dropped out. Been an interesting year for the Bulldogs. By interesting, I mean not if you're a Mississippi State fan. But they'll be here this weekend, and we'll get a chance to see them firsthand. But uh, that speaks to the depth of this conference again. Well, it really does. And again, there's a lot of talent on both sides of each division and the Trojans are going to go to a left-hander Joey Martin. Martin's going to sit 87 and 90 with that fastball throws a curve and a slider which is a little unusual a lot of times you don't see pitchers that go to both those pitches. He'll lean on that fastball a lot but probably not against Turner the left-handed batter. So by the way going back to that previous play by Webb they got the single. Soto was charged with an air on the bobble. So Wallace reached on an air went to second on a wild pitch and eventually scored on an air. And here is Turner. He's walked and singled and scored a run today. Lefty lefty matchup. Turner's sister is a softball player, I believe, at Youngstown State. I think she transferred as well. She was a Kent. So the parents went from having them there at the same spot baseball softball on campus to different spots different states got to get different gear oh yeah I gotta definitely have the swag going that ball's gonna slice into the gap in left center field it is down it's gonna take a bounce and it stays in play that's gonna give Webb a chance to score all the way from first and it's a two-run razor back lead Michael Turner another great job of opposite field hitting doubles to left center Again, another quality at bat by Michael Turner. Watch where this pitch is and watch where he hits this baseball. That is a pitch up and away. You, you go with where the pitch is. And again, the slicing away with the wind, no chance for Williams. And then there you see the speed of Webb. You feel like the Webb is finally healthy with that quad. And uh, you know he's, he's special when he's on the bases. He's had a lot of running tonight. Hogs up by two. 
So that lefty-lefty matchup didn't work out, and now you get more of the switch hitter, and Lanzilli's on deck against Martin. Or doubled in the first Razorback run in the third inning when Arkansas was trailing 6 nothing. We've talked on several broadcasts about how improved Robert Moore is from the right-hand side. A little more pop from that right-hand side than a season ago and just much more confident in the box. That's up. See if Robert can stay locked in right here 2-0. I get too jumpy at the plate. I think we reflect back on a lot of these guys. We compare Robert's season this year to last year. We compare this Razorback team to last year when they hit so many home runs. And obviously, it's a different team, different year. Everything is different. But Robert is batting cleanup this late in the season. So it's not as if, you know, you've you got to figure out a place to play him in the lineup. Here he is in a spot where he can do some damage again, and he's content to take his walk and the do-over. Davis will throw a curve and a changeup, but that fastball will be a little inconsistent when Velocity. He's a guy that might throw one 88, next pitch 94, then back to 89, 92. That's puzzling. Kind of all over the chart. lencilly has been on base twice, and he just about smoked Davis. That's in the center for a base hit. Turner had to stop at third base. That ball was in the hands of Williams in center before Turner even got to third. Wow. That ball, I'd like to know the exit velo off that one. We got to find that out. That ball was absolutely smoked. That's where Preston Davis wishes he had an L screen right there. You just got to get out of the way of that one. Wow. That is, you can't hit the ball any harder than that. I mean, I thought for sure that might just take Davis with it. Jalen Battles came up with the bases loaded last inning and singled. He was trying to do more than single. Might have to go to the chiropractor after that swing. You can see he still has a little grin going. He's like, wow, I swung yeah. out of my shoes you on know, that one. He's been so disciplined as far as, you know, choking up and almost bringing his hands into his body to get barrel on baseball, willing to accept base hits. He gave himself one there. That's like the guy who goes on a diet and on Sunday he says, let's go get some ice cream and throw down a couple of beverages. Got to splurge every now and then, don't you? By the way, <laughs> I had to ask. It's the first time I've ever asked for the exit velo on a single. How about 110 off the wow. bat from Lanzilli? That's, that's phenomenal. And people that don't understand how hard that ball's hit, that's that's in the upper echelon of even big league hitters. Davis was lunging out of the way, and the ball was 30 feet by him. <laughs> I think Matt Hobbs <laughs> said that Lanzilli has concrete in his bat. I think that's the case. I mean, that was that was scary. Two and two. Did you see the home runs Aaron Judge hit the other day in uh, Tampa in spring training? I missed those. He hit one over the batter's eye in center, which is similar what? to ours. And it, you know, there's a street back there, Dale Mabry, and it had to have taken out a couple of cars or bounced and then gone to the other side. And he hit one to right center field at 114 miles an hour, an opposite field line drive. Wow. Well, he's not even human. No, he's, he's just a giant. Yeah, he's, he's from a different planet. Three and two to battles as we get back to the ranch. Still nobody out. Five straight have reached this inning. Will Jalen get something to hit? He will. Line drive, left center. Everybody's going to move up 90 feet. The Hogs have been hitting the ball so hard, they're going station to station. But from six down, they now lead by three. Well, if you're Jalen Battles, you put the screws to a ball, and you're thinking you get an RBI. But that's really a good job of base running by Robert Moore right there because that ball doesn't clear the shortstop by much. We already saw Caden Wallace get doubled off early in this ball game. 
Turner getting a lot of congratulations, but Moore froze and actually went back to second base because there's a good chance that ball was going to get caught, and he had to scurry just to get to third base. He gets one RBI, but that's six straight that have reached. This is a frustrating time, Troy, for Chris Curry and the Trojans. You get that six nothing lead, and now you, now you're not only trailing, but you're trying to swim through this inning and just start accumulating some outs. I think that was the fear of the Trojans this whole time because, again, you're not going to use your starters during a midweek ball game. You want to save those for Sun Belt action, and again, you just wonder what what your guys are going to do, and you just want to try to avoid the big crooked number, and that's what Arkansas has got in this inning. Yeah, Weatherly pitched well into the fifth, but he left. They scored five runs that frame, three more this inning. Diggs did not like that previous strike call. Bases remain loaded, and he'll wave and miss. Well, he was way out in front. Preston Davis from Texarkana, member of the Sticks. He was a dragon. Not a real life dragon, but a, it must be the high school it's nickname. It's a great mascot. You, you love having a mascot that's tough. Two strike pitch. And that is going to be strike three. My goodness, did he really swing on that one? Bradford Polk on the appeal says yes. That's the first out of this inning. Gonna have to see that one again from the side. I almost thought from the front that he did offer that ball at that bat cross, and it's it, it's really hard to tell, but that was my you can see DVA said I didn't think so. See if that barrel crosses home plate. Yeah. I, I think that's a good call. I think so. He's saying no. I think it's close enough where and you see DVH in the background. He, what? That might have been an, an ode towards <laughs> hastening. This inning. Let's this inning get yeah. over a little bit faster. That does not make Diggs feel any better. Here's Varnado. Singled in a run his last time in. This ball might have a chance to drop. A long run for Soto going out as the shortstop Garrett. But Moore is going to tag and score, so that's a shallow sack fly RBI. Varnado will get the run batted in on the uh, speed of Robert Moore. Okay, did Garrett not know that there's a runner on third base? Because he just caught that baseball and never even attempted to turn and throw this ball to the plate. I don't know if he thought Robert would score, but I, I thought this is an easy play because with Garrett making the catch, his momentum is carrying him away a bit from maybe being able to plant, but we'll get a look here. Maybe he just doesn't think he has any chance to throw this ball to the plate, but look at him. Oh, he, that's, he, that's forgetting. Yeah, he forgot that he, yeah. right there he yeah. goes up, there's a runner on third. No, that's a great shot because you realize he just quite frankly forgot about it. And Dylan Leach. You want to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume, like, well, maybe it was sure. just carrying, but no, he, he saw that panic at the end when he turned around. It's great camera work by our crew. They're always right on top of it, right, Brett? E for effort. On what it'll be a long night for the crew. Here's Leach. Hawks had five in the fifth, four in the sixth. Did you see the balk the other day at Mizzou? What did you make of that situation? Okay. The umpires got together, conferred, and then called a balk like two minutes later. I didn't see that play. Uh, I need to ask DVH on that one. Was it on Arkansas or on Missouri? It was on Missouri, and it led to a run and really kind of irritated the Tigers. It was part of that freebie process where you know each team had some innings where they kind of got away from them providing some free runs right nothing more free than a, a balk even after a delayed <laughs> two discussion minute, two minute balk that's that's pretty crazy two and one to leach that'll be well back and out of play and for a guy that wants to square one up that's Dylan Leach right here he had a good BP today a lot of times that'll carry over to the plate, into the game time situation. Eleven seven, Razorbacks. The Hawks have scored the eleven of the last twelve runs in this game, and Leach will wave and miss, so that will end the inning. So, three straight retired, but Arkansas does get four. 
in this frame. On we go to the seventh. Beautiful Baumwalker Stadium. This game heads to the seventh, and we're eating ice cream. Yes, Troy and Brett, we got some ice cream delivered by Kevin Trainer. Quite frankly, he's never given us anything ever. So <laughs> we're going to eat the ice cream as uh, those fans enjoy the, the windy night. But this is also Troy's birthday. We yeah, did, that's fine. No did, cake. That, I'll take ice cream. You get ice cream. That so, works. Uh, you know, we didn't tell the listening audience how old you were, double nickel, but it is yeah. up there. When you're when you're a speed limit, you know you're old. An interstate speed limit, no doubt. But yeah, thanks Kevin Trainer for the sweet treat. Do we keep eating or do we stop? I don't know if we can. It's 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 not like it's 20 degrees like it's been in other broadcasts. Well, Evan Taylor had a quick sixth inning. I'm not sure if he might oblige in the seventh. He is going to get the heart of the lineup. Spins it a strike to Dickerson. That's the pitch why he's so tough on left-handers at Taylor. That starts at the the middle of the back of the left-handed batter and just sweeps in there. Might be able to throw it through Dickerson at some point here. <laughs> well, that's tough to hit. I, I just don't know how you hit that. That's where you, you can't try to pull that pitch. And then if you're Taylor, you've got the option of maybe coming back with a fastball or you can just keep just throw it move, again. moving that thing out off the plate right here. He threw it again. Wow, that's filthy. Good afternoon, good night. I mean, that's a good hitter right there in Dickerson. This pitch isn't fair. I mean, watch where this thing starts out and watch where it ends up. The angle that he throws from, it almost feels like it's behind the hitter. Yeah, that's 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 a really quality college hitter. And he did not look comfortable at all, and that's Noah Dickerson. Canyon McWilliams homered into the bullpen in his last at bat, the bullpen and left, made it 7-2. And since then, it's been all Hawks. Would say McWilliams certainly enjoyed his trip around the bases. Can't say I blame him. I mean, if you just look at McWilliams, he, he looks like a guy that's probably played like six or seven years of minor league baseball. He He's got the frame of probably a 28-year-old. I mean, he is a man in the batter's box. He is a canyon. Oh, yeah, very appropriate. Producer Paul didn't seem to like me eating my ice cream <laughs> on the air. Does he not understand that it may just disintegrate or melt? Got to do what you got to do, right? It was a tasty little mid-game treat. One and two the count. I think I threw a Sean Casey out there in McWilliams earlier, maybe a John Cruck. I'm not sure, but uh, it's a good hitter. I love with two strikes, he really has that inside-out approach. He tries to spray that pitch the other way. He didn't have to right there. He just yanks it. Barreled it up, his ninth multi-hit game of the year. Just get barrel to baseball. That is, that's a talent. That's a skill. Standing next to a guy over there in Turner who's got similar attributes. You got the, uh, what did you get? You get the. Uh, I got I got a drumstick. You did get a drumstick. Yeah. I got Kevin, the. He's bringing his A game right there. Double the dipped cream. mini ice cream bar. This is Tyler Williams. One of those things. There's, there's no bad ice cream. It's all good. Is it better than the Stinger waffle that we uh, obtained from time to time on our walks to and from the dugout? Yeah, I think it is. Nick Williams has been off on those breaking balls all night. Excuse me, Williams. This would be the. Mine's still got a little bit there. There we go. The double dip mini bar. And that's the drumstick. It's still hanging in there. Yeah, no, it's it's. I gotta go yep. this way. Yep, no. Well, we know that camera's behind us. We're in trouble. There's a dribbler towards short. Funny spin. They're still gonna get the out at second. It almost got the double play. That was no by means whatsoever a double play bouncer, and the Hawks made it close and got the lead runner. Well, how good are Jalen Battles and Robert Moore turning two? 
That's a ball that may even be off the bat. You're thinking, okay, it's going to be close at first base, bang, bang, and they almost turn a double play. Watch the English. I thought maybe this was one that you misplay because of the funny bounce. Yeah, that's really tough, but a great feed by Battles right where he needs to and just too much speed by Williams right there. You can see about that last couple strides. He goes, I know I'm going to be safe. I'm just going to put in cruise control. Here's Soto knocked in a run way back in the first inning. That was a long time ago. Soto's thrown out a runner at the plate, committed an error and left. It's been a little bit of everything. A senior out of Kissimmee, Florida. If I could get back all the time I spent in Kissimmee, Florida, probably have a year of my life. Pretty close. There's worse places to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was warm for your, well, your, your guy that complains about temperature uh, all the true. time. No, that's there true. you go. I would say March, when you're that close to the mouse, it's an interesting traffic <laughs> that would scenario. Be. That locks up Leach, and Williams will have a free base. It's a wild pitch on Evan Taylor. There are two outs, and thank you for your DVH and Matt Hobbs. You want Taylor to put this batter away right here and get back to the dugout. So to one for two, he singled in the first inning, struck out in the second, hit by a pitch in the fifth. Ground ball right into the ship. Battles heading played perfectly. Fires a laser beam over to Turner, and that retires Soto. Troy can eat some ice cream. He's got about 90 seconds to do so. Enjoy your birthday. There you go. Here's some upcoming games on old big boy TV. Linear television, Friday night, hogs and dogs from Bomb Walker. As well on ESPN2, you've got the... Uh, Battle of Tennessee, the Volunteers will be in Nashville to take on Vandy. In fact, Saturday they'll be there as well. Troy, if Tennessee would emerge from that series, say winning two out of three, they will have swept Old Miss on the road and maybe won a series at Vandy back-to-back -back weekends. They'll be hard to catch. Yeah, they... that would be big time for the Volunteers, and Tony Vitello really has his team on a roll. Caden Wallace leads off the bottom of the seventh inning. Homered back in the fifth. Couple of hits on his ledger. I think Caden said thank you. So that pitch low, and he got a no, and he said, okay, thank you. A nice young man. There's a rip and a miss. Hey, you really don't want to get the umpire get on his bad side, do you? Well, probably not. But uh, – Just wanted to get back in and swing it. Looking for his third hit down in the count, however. And a pitch from Davis is off the corner. Four o'clock tomorrow. We'll have game two of this series. Arkansas will be at home Friday. Little Rock will be at Troy, Alabama. Won't visit you. They'll go to Troy, Alabama. That's some big time traveling by the Trojans. And that's strike three. Nice job by Preston Davis. Really pulled a string right there. Wallace may not be as polite here, but uh, first out of the inning. Little Rock's going to have to make sure they bus home tomorrow night so that they can get up to take a different bus at 8 a.m. on Thursday to Alabama. That is traveling in the Sun Belt Conference. That's some glamour right there. That's one of those ones that you just hope you can sleep on the bus. Some, some guys Webb. can, some guys can't. It's like some people sleeping on an airplane. I would agree. And you know, even during these uh, recent struggles, Coach Curry said our, our care meter is pretty high. And I think we're going to show some video of, of the extent they went to play a game during that uh, weekend where Arkansas had to have the snow out and had to remove the snow on a Friday in order to play on a Saturday. Well, they went ahead and played on that. Friday until they couldn't, until the snow came down, and then the players showed up the next morning at 8 a.m. and had to clear the field before they could play and resume the 
suspend a game and then play another. You don't do that if you don't enjoy it either. That's a strike to Webb. Well, that's true, and that's you know some of the advantages of the different leagues and you know what kind of resources you have. You, you know, Arkansas had a, a ground crew that got that done. The Little Rock players they had to do it themselves. That one bounced well in front of the plate. Kind of got on top of that changeup and just spiked it. Does this motion by Preston Davis kind of remind you a little bit of Nolan Ryan with that high leg kick into the chest? Yes, it does. I mean, he's not throwing no, 100 like Nolan Ryan is, no, but, I mean, the, the motion. That's a great comp because Nolan would tuck that leg against his chest and have that split second where he would hang it there. And once I locked in on Davis, I would say that's almost a, a spitting image. You'll get a here from the backside. Watch him tuck this leg up against the body. I mean, right up to the chest. And that's ball four. There's some statues of Nolan that stop when that leg gets right up against that chest because it's so unmistakable. I guess if you're, you're going to uh, copy somebody, he's a good guy to copy. I was in a hotel in Houston, Troy, and for whatever reason, they gave me the – I mean, they gave me the penthouse, right? I mean, I got the best room in the whole facility. Looks out towards Minute Maid. And I had to stay an extra night as, as Turner steps in. The next morning, I get a call from the front desk. Would you be willing to uh, to move to a different room? And I thought, well, my time here has expired. Cinderella, <laughs> you know, we're at midnight. So, I, you know, I go through and I move as Turner takes one up and out. And the next day, I look down in the lobby and I see Nolan Ryan. So later on that night, I, I walked up to him and I said, hey, Nolan. Do you have the same room at this hotel whenever you stay? He said, yeah, I do. I said, I'm in the penthouse. I got the top floor. I look out, and I said, I had that room last night until I, <laughs> until I was asked to move. I got bumped <laughs> by a more important person. So you got to get bumped. That's pretty good company no, to get bumped he, by. He, he, was, he was nice and apologetic. I said, no, no need to apologize. I just wanted to confirm. Turner's had a couple of hits. He's been on base three times today and scored a pair of runs. We talk about guys that have good quality at bats. Yeah, that's just Michael Turner. I, I, I don't know if I've seen him, like, out on his front foot lunging after a ball. And I can tell you there's, there's more times than I'd like to admit that I did that in my career. Just the ability to stay back and use those hands. That's straight up the shoot. The wind's still blowing. As McWilliams drifts in front of the mound, he's had a couple of pop-ups where he's made the play on today. He made those look easy. Both balls in the great. area that he's just kind of got around that baseball and read the win. It's not an easy play, and he made it look like it was routine. That's one Ohio native taking care of another. Robert Moore has scored three runs today. The only time he was retired, he hit an absolute seed at the second baseman, Hussein for a double play. It feels like this game is just out of control, but Arkansas is up only up four runs, which that's a lot. But again, that's a the, Little Rock can come back on this delayed steal outstanding by Braden Webb. He just did get in there, although the ball was not caught cleanly. So Webb gets his second stolen base of the night. But you feel like Arkansas has just pounded so many runs in a row, you feel like that they're in the driver's seat, but this game's still pretty close. Watch this delay steal. A couple shuffles, and then he's off to the races. And, again, a good throw, I think, gets him. I do, too. He stopped a little bit short. And <laughs> that momentum was slowing down a lot as he was getting into the base. Had a lot of drag on that head first slide. Moore's been bouncing back and forth between right-handed and left-handed tonight. Walk, a hit by a pitch, a double. It was a great changeup by Davis. Yeah, he's been all over the chart. It's been Robert Moore. And again, you got to love that if you're Robert Moore up there, now you got a chance for an RBI. And I can tell you right now, every hitter always knows if they have a chance to get an RBI. He might just shoot one to the left. Oh, he was thinking bolder aspirations than that. That was a hanger, and he was trying to bang. Yeah. He's checking big, his back out. <laughs> big 79-mile-an-hour changeup. Davis might throw that thing three in a row. 
I was watching Robert with some of those side swings today, the way he gets into that, that back hip, kind of brings that front leg back. Sends one down the line and left. Does he have another base hit? That is a sliding grab by Soto. He's had a few nice plays tonight. He really has. Great range. Nice break by Soto right here. That's a ball that Robert Moore off the bat thinks it's going to slice away with that win and that spin. But great read by Soto. Leaves his feet and makes an outstanding play. On we go to the top of the eighth inning. Nice play by the Trojans and Soto to keep Arkansas from adding to this 11-7 lead. And Hawks have gone to the bullpen. Here's Gabe Starks. Yeah, Starks was outstanding in Columbia, Missouri last weekend. He's got electric stuff. Got that only six foot tall, and he pitches with a lot of tilt, a lot of downward angle on that fastball. And again, D1 baseball has him in the top 50 relievers in the country. He's going to get high on his stuff. Indeed. Jake Wright, who's had a couple of doubles, a couple of big swings today for the Trojans. Again, it was 4 nothing Little Rock after one. They had a 6 nothing lead, a 7-2 advantage. Arkansas had a five-run fifth, a four-run sixth, but still time left for the Trojans. Jake Wright out of Bryant, Arkansas. Well, that program produces a lot of really good players. Starks needs a strike. Let's live it upstairs in the zone right now. Ten pitchers combined have been used in this game. Does that surprise you, Brad? No, I thought that might be a little bit low for an 11-7 game. No, we're not done yet. No, we're not. I think it could get up to 13. That's, that might be the magical number. That's ball four. If you're Arkansas, do you want to stay away from Tiger because he closed two games this weekend? Yeah, I don't think you're going to see him at all. I think you just let him rest and maybe throw a bullpen and – come back because I think quickly he's he's becoming the dude out of the pen. No, I would agree. I think that's the one thing about the closer role, though, in the college level. If you're going to lean heavily into the weekend, there still could be games you'd want to close and win during weeknights. As Garrett bats, sort of an allocation of resources. And that fastball registers at 90 on the gun, but it just looks like it's got a little extra life. About halfway to the plate, it almost just kind of seems like it picks up speed and velocity. What's he nibbling on now? He's gone through know. the he's... Cheez-Its. Well, we're working on pretzels. I don't think he's <laughs> – I think he's comfortable going through the snack bar today. That's a wave and a miss. You always wonder, is it the guy – is he a salty guy? Is he a sweet guy? But ta oh, Tiger is definitely the salty guy. All right, now he's showing. I think that's Jade. He's like, look at this pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> They're making me thirsty. <laughs> oh, that's great. A little Seinfeld reference. I'm right there with you. He's going to make that thing last a half an inning. Don't be afraid to chew off the whole pretzel. Here's the two-strike pitch. That just about got Garrett, and that's not what Starks wants to do. Put a couple of guys on. As you mentioned, this is only a four-run game. Free base runners have been the enemy when the Trojans jumped out to their early lead, and they were a big part of how Arkansas – Got right back in it. Gas. Wave it a miss. One gone. I'm with you. It feels like that's harder than 90. It really does. It's got some late life. It just seems like it explodes halfway to the plate. You know, and, and different radar guns are different. I don't know if it, it picks it up out of the hand or, or what, but it just seems like that's harder than 90 because a lot of these pitchers have been throwing that same speed. There's Figueroa. Leach tried to bring that down into the zone, but didn't get the call. You, you think about Starks. We, I talked about him having a lot of tilt on that fastball, but it seems like that this tonight his pitch is a lot more flat and straight. He's not getting that good downward location. It's all about the release point. He's releasing that ball out in front just a little too early, and that's why it's sailing up in the zone on him. Could be. I feel like there's kind of a fulcrum effect with, with mm -hmm. Starks, too, the way he kind of comes bends downward. 
It's almost like he's playing the long toss with Leach instead of from the pitcher's mound to the plate because it seems like that ball's got a lot of carry to it. That was better. Two and one. They Figueroa, he's just a scrappy hitter up there. He's he's going to spray the ball all around the field. Well, we'll be back and out of play. See Zebulon Vermillion in the background out there warming up. I thought we might see him as well. I think that's probably by design, nothing to do with the performance of Starks. I think you might see him in the ninth. CV got a save in that game against Kentucky last Sunday by throwing three scoreless innings. Is that a swing? I don't think so. It is not. Count's gone full. Long pause from Starks before this payoff pitch, and here it comes. Lined into right center. That's a base hit. Right will go to second. Stop there. Played back in, sort of. And Figueroa has his second hit of the game. Here come the Trojans in the eighth. Really like Figueroa's approach at the plate. Really flat swing as that bat comes through the zone. And again, you're going to make a lot more contact with that level swing than you are with that one that has a, a lot of exaggerated lift to it. Well, don't look now. Here's Hussein, the leadoff hitter. Now it's Lyons and Dickerson to follow. Would you be surprised if this was the last batter of Starks if Hussein reached? No, not at all. I think that they would go for that experience in Vermilion to come in and try to squash any kind of a rally that the Trojans are trying to put together right here. And you feel like one big swing could really kind of turn this game around a little bit. Tried to roll that one in. Did not get the call. Right at second, Figueroa at first. We are in the eighth inning. Starks really closing off that stretch position. And that one shanked back to the screen. And uh, Davey Etch was going to make the catch on the deflection, and Clay Goodwin got in his way. <laughs> <laughs> Clay's got a smile on his face because I almost hit the skipper. What you don't want to do is when he's trying to make the catch is, uh, you know, Played off your hand off his nose. Yeah, you, you better not miss it. Well, I really like what Arkansas is doing with the outfield. Center field and right field is really shallow, taking away that little looper to the outfield. Uh, that will not help the cause, but is there going to be a play at third base? I think Wallace creeped in front of the baseline, or he might have had a chance to extend back and possibly tag out Hussein. I got to see this one again. I just wonder if if this was a cross up right here. This thing just sails right over the top of Leach. Yeah, I think if Wallace is not so far in front of the bag, that might be an out. Good throw by Leach. What is it with Starks on those caroms that almost work out for the Razorbacks? Didn't they end a game when he covered the plate? <laughs> I think so. This thing doesn't touch any leather and. And that's just a really good slide right there by Jake yeah. Wright. Went to the back edge of the base. Now the other thing that does, it takes away the double play. There's still just one out in this inning, but both the runners move up, and Gabe Starks is going to have to work himself out of a jam. Strike three. That's one way to do it. Hussein not happy. I thought this was possibly in the zone. Let's take another look and see if it should have been a strike. I think I think Hussein's got an argument. I think you got to give some props to Dylan Leach right there. I do think that ball's off the plate. Okay. 
That's a big second out. It'll keep Starks in the game for the time being. Here's Lyons. Also keeps the tying run on deck and not at the plate. I think the other thing about that last pitch was I'm not really even sure I've ever started in the zone. Kind of like that one. That was a little bit better. But the other one was just kind of felt like it was just off the plate. Until that wind really hasn't let up any at all. It's still just wailing out there. You can hear it in the mic. Like we're lost at sea. One and one to Lions. Playing a game on the back day. of a flatbed. Might be. <laughs> Just driving down the interstate. Old Glory still whipping. The 1-1 one, one from Starks. At the knees, called strike. That was down to 88. Maybe sacrificing a little velo for even better control or command. To dial it in just a bit. Couple of runners in scoring position. And a one two pitch. Wave and a miss. How about Starks with three strikeouts this on 16 hits? Here's the 11th pitcher of the game. Oh, goodness gracious. That thing went to the backstop. This is going to be Evan Vanek. He's got a live arm. They show him listed 94 to 96 on that fastball. He's got some run on that fastball. And again, see the numbers, only three and two-thirds innings on the season for Vanek. Sand Jack product. Same Juco that produced uh, Matt Goodhart, among others. Lanzilli has been on base three times. He's had a couple of hits, pair of RBIs, and he had a single 110 exit velo. In his last at bat. I think I'd be talking about that for a while. Wow, that was. Uh, and, was special. And, and just thank goodness it didn't hit the pitcher because it almost did. And that that could have been really scary if the ball hit that hard. You know, we were talking about Vanek and his velo, Troy. I think it's becoming to, into focus. He did spend his first year at a and in 2020. That was, of course, the shortened year. Then mm -hmm. went to San Jack. But a guy that was even drafted by the Diamondbacks. It's that raw potential. A really lanky kind of slings that baseball in that three-quarters arm slot. Lancilli's multi-hit game is ninth this season. And he's going to take a pair of walks in addition to those two hits. He came into this game with an on-base percentage of 463. That's absurd. And he's reached base four times tonight. That'll help a little bit. Jalen Battle's working on a nice night as well. He started 0 for 2, but he's had a couple of hard singles since with a pair of RBIs, jumping his total up to 13. Arkansas with 12 hits in the game. For a night, Troy, they've had one home run, which was a solo shot. And he have 11 runs. You would think there may be more hits than that up on that board. Yeah, they've really taken advantage of those free base runners. And Fanick, that might be kind of his downfall. The arm is definitely there. The consistency of release point is what's eluding him right now. Didn't have to change his color scheme much, did he, from AM to yeah, Little Rock? Huh? It's just all his uh, sleeves match. And So here's a question. Is there any difference between A&M and Mississippi State? Is, is, is all the maroon the same? Is there a different shade? It's a deep question. You're that is, that is pondering deep. this think, late into the game. Thinking about the Little Rock color as well.
Battles has got a little bit of room in right center field. Williams, the center field is shading just a step or two over to the left. That's ball three. Damn, there's definitely some run on those pitches by Vanek. And when you get those fingers on the side of the baseball, you kind of get some side spin. Yeah, there's some serious movement. I think that's what definitely gets Scout's attention, the live arm and, and some run on any kind of pitch he throws. Even that pitch right there, in. that's a 3-1. <laughs> I think he ran about four or five inches. It barely caught the inside corner. Lanzilli works his way off second. That one hit into the right field corner, bending and going foul in the first couple of rows of those seats. And the scramble's on. Okay, got a Chicago Bears sweatshirt on. Dick Buckus make an appearance down there. <laughs> Mike Singletary. Dickerson really being moved towards right. There's three hot dog wrappers on the field out in right field right now, and this one will be popped up, bending towards the seats. Look out to the warning track in front of the uh, home bullpen. It's like Candlestick Park out there. I mean, there's trash everywhere out there. It's blowing around like it's Stu Miller and the – all-star game. You got to get somebody from the bullpen to go up there and clean that up. I mean, that's just unseemly. It's, it's just swirling. I was waiting for that ball to land amongst those wrappers and roll right into one of those. Could that be like a ball wedged in the fence? If it's wrapped up into a wrapper, do you throw your hands up in the air? You can't throw the wrapper back in. That's not going to work. Count's gone full to battles. That thing had some movement too, but that's a couple of walks. I thought maybe you were going to lose that in your prediction of pitchers. Maybe we were going to stop at 12 instead of 13. Well, <laughs> don't tell me. Don't tell me he's getting ready to go out there and pick up the trash. That would be a great PSA, right? Pick up your trash. Don't mess with Texas, whatever the expression is. Pick up your hey. – meanwhile, here we go. Pitcher number 12, Vanek, face two, and, and a little bit too much movement. We're going to step aside. Troy can go pick up some trash. We'll regather and be back here in 90 seconds. Boy, the song Raspberry Beret playing in the background. That's the kind you find in a secondhand store. Meanwhile, go. Saturday afternoon, the feature softball game is a top 20 matchup. Number 18 Auburn hosts number six Florida at Jane B. Moore Field. Coverage of the second game of this uh, three game series begins at three Eastern, two Central on the SEC Network and ESP and app. Arkansas finished off a three-game wraparound weekend series with LSU last night. Troy, they had almost 8,000 fans combined for the three games. That's big time at Vogel Park. And I tell you what, those girls, are fun to watch. They can swing they, it. They can hit. In fact, uh, Lenny Malkin from Colorado had a grand slam last night. Centennial Colorado native Reese Lansville will try and make that a worthy segue as he comes on to pitch here in the eighth inning. Kendall Diggs will show bunt and foul one away. Lansville is a product of Northeast Community College in Nebraska. Pitched in seven games last year, but hit a couple of years in Norfolk, Nebraska. He'll set that fastball in the upper 80s to right around 90. Throws a curve and a slider as well, Brett. I'll take your word for it. Here's the 0-1. Dix hammers one to left. Back goes Soto. Goodbye. Kendall Dix hits his first collegiate home run. It's an oppo three-run shot to blow this game open in the bottom of the eighth inning. He was trying to bunt in his first pitch, then hammers a three-run bomb. And he's all smiles, and he can't even hold that smile back right now. Neither can the dugout. Okay, does this ball hit off the top of the wall? I think it hit something. Watch this ball. Yeah, again, Diggs, don't bunt. Swing it, big man. Connects that ball. It's it. Well, you can see TVH in the background telling it to go. It bounces yep. off the top of the fence and ricochets. It, it, Soto's got to try to make an effort right there. 
Maybe he just didn't get back there quick enough. I don't think he got enough. back quick enough. Here's Varnado. It's always fun to get that first uh, college bomb out of the way. And the walks just really have hurt the Trojans tonight. Those free base runners have just absolutely killed them. Arkansas scored 15 of the last 15 runs, 14 of the last 15 in the game. Hawks came into the game tonight 10th in the conference in home runs. Again, for a team that led the country last year in long balls. Maybe just bequeath that honor to Tennessee this season, but there's a lot more to come in the long ball category. You think that you've got a guy like Borfin that has been hurt with a shoulder injury. Slavens really hasn't kind of got that stroke going yet. There's a lot more pop in the Arkansas lineup yeah. that just hasn't been there so far. I think Robert's going to hit a few. Yeah. Varnado got a sacrifice fly pop up to the shortstop in his last at bat. And an RBI single as well, and he just wore that one off his helmet. And that ball shot about 40 feet in the air once it plunked it. He's smiling too. <laughs> Slow breaking ball. You know, it wasn't on purpose. That was just one that just kind of spun out of the hand. Of it Watch this pitcher. ball once it hits his helmet. I mean, this thing goes straight in the air like a pop-up. We should let that run through and watch when this thing lands because, I mean, that one. <laughs> <laughs> shake the shake, cobwebs I loose right say, there. Shake those out. Dylan Leach would like to join the parade. This one's tagged. Hit well to center. Williams back. Now he has to go hard to his right to make the catch. One out. I think Williams ran about 30 yards to make that catch, didn't he? That's a good effort, though, not to give up on that baseball. You know it's going to bend, but you know at some point I think you need to see it move before you just start sprinting to your right. Wallace homered in the fifth inning. That was the first of five runs that frame. That's a strike haul. 14 runs on 13 base hits, and the Hogs have hit a pair of bombs. I feel like I have said this multiple times. When Illinois State came in here, they won the first game on opening day. Arkansas took the last two. We said that's a team in the Redbirds that's going to win a lot of games, and I think to their credit they have since. And uh, I didn't get to see Southeastern. They took a game out of their series. Felt like UIC was getting close when, when they were here and could knock off a few people. Uh, this Little Rock team, though, the way they came out swinging the bats tonight, I think there's a lot of damage for them to do in the Sun Belt. Yeah, I really think so. It's a, it's a really good conference. But this is a team that, again, if, if they can start feeling a little bit better, which they will, and uh, you know, as the weather gets better, it seems like your defense always kind of gets stronger and uh, just really fill up that strike zone as a pitching staff, they're going to score runs. There's no doubt about that. They're going to be in ball games. They just can't give at-bats away. Wallace lines one towards right center field. How about the speed of Williams to outrun that baseball and make the catch? Well, Brett, you talked about his athleticism. That is an absolutely amazing play because off the bat, I can tell you right now, Caden Wallace thinks that ball is a double in I the I do gap. too. I mean, where this ball was caught, Look at the, how far he's going to have to go. That ball usually is off that decal on a couple of bounces or off those uh, years. And usually with the way it, with a right-handed batter, it's slicing away from the center fielder. I, I tell you what also is a factor is that crosswind. <laughs> it that might have blown it back to him just a foot or two. Braden Webb turned on that one, hit it a mile foul. A couple of singles and a walk today for Braden, who's also stolen – Two bases. What are the chances at the end of the year that batting average is in the high 200s? Oh, I definitely think it will be. I think he'll hit maybe around, right around 290, 285, 290. 
That ball is hit a ton in the air. Deep left center field, into the wind, into the hog pen. Goodbye. And Braden Webb now leads this team in home runs. After the slow start, he has been on fire since, and he has hit some monster tape measure home runs into the people. Wow, that's impressive. Because I can tell you right now that we didn't know if anybody was going to hit one out anywhere from down the left field line, and this ball is absolutely crushed. I mean, this is a no doubter. It didn't get out by a whole lot. That clears the fence by about 75 feet without that win. I'm telling you, that is well up the berm without the wind. That's a three-hit game for Braden Webb. He has the best batting average of anybody on this roster in conference games only. And all of a sudden, he's gone from zero for 23 to five home runs to lead the team in a matter of about two and a half weeks. That home run he hit against Kentucky on Sunday that traveled 400 42 feet was pretty incredible. Well, and I think if I'm on the bench and I'm Brady Slavens, I'm thinking, okay, my time is coming. Here's a guy, Braden Webb, just like you said, over 23, really scuffling at the plate, wasn't seeing the ball well. Kind of what Brady's going through, maybe not quite that bad, but you feel like that that give you, gives you some encouragement when you see one of your teammates do that. No, it's a great example. You don't have to talk about this player from a couple of years ago. You say your guy, that guy, from two weeks ago. I think it's the headband, quite honestly. <laughs> Got to have some flash and some flair there going. No, I mean. Whatever it takes, right? I mean, he'll be wearing that thing to class before long. Turner's trying to get his third hit of the game. Where's that pitch? Sixteen to seven. Remember when we kind of flash back to that win the uh, Trojans had when they won seventeen to seven. Kind of has that feeling when the Trojans pulled away late with a couple of big swings and big innings. It's almost been that reverse tonight. Yeah, I think so. You just felt like Little Rock with that jumping out to that big lead that they were feeling pretty comfortable. But again, both these teams. They're, they're not throwing their starters. Wow. Michael Turner's got another hit. Just serving one like Tony Gwynn down the line and left, and that's his third of the game. How good is that swing? We've talked about, you know, the blast by Braden Webb and Caden Wallace on the home runs and Kendall Diggs. This is just outstanding. That, that pitch isn't even close to being a strike. And he just shoots that ball down the left field line again. It just almost looks like he just guided it that direction. Fifteen hits now for the Razorbacks. Robert Moore, the only hog not to bat this inning. Until now. Two times he's been retired. He hit a bullet to second for a double play and hit a ball down the line and left that Soto made a sliding grab on that saved another run from scoring. Got a little bit anxious on that pitch. He's seen a lot of change up in his last couple at bats. There was another one up in his eyes. Scouting report is he can turn around a fastball. There's no doubt about that. Might see another one right here. Tomahawk foul. Wind's still howling. In fact, I think they're actually getting stronger. You feel like you're at the beach or something that the ocean is just wailing. I think there's a, well, there's definitely a storm coming in. There's no doubt about that. Not a piece of trash blowing right in between the mound and the plate.
Chopper towards first. This will end the inning. Hawks have their second five-run frame tonight. They've had two five-run innings in a four-run inning. Trojans down to their final three outs. It's a 16-7 Razorback lead as we go to the ninth inning. This will be pitcher number six for the Hogs, Sebulon Vermillion. And we reach number lucky 13, right? Is that right, or did we get to 12? Uh, I think that's 13, that's isn't it? Seven and six, that would be 13. 13. Vermillion, he's a guy that's straight over the top. He's got a really good fastball. You can see the microscopic ERA, and He's done nothing but just fill up the strike zone. Got to love the 14 punch outs with only six walks. By the way, an update on that Old Miss score tonight, that 20 to three game against North Alabama, that was in six innings. Oof. As Dickerson waves and misses, they hit five home runs. The home run from Braden Webb was 105 miles an hour off the bat, 388 distance. Just to be efficient and effective and thorough. Here's. Dickerson, who got a single and an RBI way back in the first. There's something to say about Braden Webb being able to hit a home run through that wind. I mean, I'm, I, people at home just don't realize how hard that wind is blowing. And just, I think it probably took at least 50 feet away off that, that home run. It was significant, and he still got it out into the hog pen. Ball's tagged into right center field. Will Webb be able to get there? He will not, but he'll play it on the bounce and toss it back in. This throw is on the money, and it's going to get. No. It looked like for sure that ball was there waiting for Dickerson, but he got around the tag apparently of battles. No argument from Jalen, and that's a double. That would have been some type of outfield assist. That was Pickering for the pinch hit that came in and just smoked that ball. Webb with just a great play right here. Again, about that point, you think, okay, he's dead meat, but what a slide. And he swim did move. like what you see, that swim slide. You pull that right arm back and you stick that left arm in there. That was outstanding. Andrew Pickering. Well, that was Dickerson. This is Pickering here. Oh, excuse here. me. My bad. Pickering hitting for McWilliams. It doesn't look like Pickering either. Well, I think I do think Pickering's out at second base. He's 21. Well, they got him listed at Dickerson in the uh, game cast, but they'll catch up. This is Burnaby. Going to chop one towards Battles. So Burnaby retired. Pickering will go to third. And the Trojans down to their final two outs. Third straight pinch hitter here for Little Rock. They keep them coming. Good job by Coach Curry to get some of these guys into the lineup. This is Noah Bergarello. Ninety-four in the gun, little extra juice right there by ZV. Yeah, Bergarello did not last long. Now there's two outs. Bergarello was uh, a spectator on this one. A young man from Sandra Day O'Connor High School. She turned 92 the other day, by the way. Just mixing in all kinds of information for you. But uh, Bergarello goes down on strikes. And here's Soto. Maybe I'm getting, obviously I'm getting old, but it doesn't seem like she should be that old, right? Well, she's been uh, retired for quite some time. You get a little bit of everything when you tune into a <laughs> SEC Network Plus Can telecast. Sandra Day O'Connor quote. Yeah, her birthday, a little ice go. cream, a few birthday wishes. That's a wave of a miss. Trojans down to their final strike and out in the ninth inning.
And that one is going to be in the air. Can somebody get there? Wynn will work this in a foul territory. Look out for the tarp. And Turner ran out of room. Those are one of those balls as a head coach. You're just like, okay, nobody get hurt. Oh, please. Soto had a big hit way back in the first inning. Again, Little Rock had a 4-0 lead after the first and had a 6-0 lead, but the uh, Razorbacks certainly found their bats late. And that one not close. When your starter goes two-thirds of an inning today, Troy, and you're down six to nothing, if you have a chance to get a win, I would say things finished a lot better than they started. That is definitely the case. Tag to center. Webb was playing shallow, turning and running. That ball's over his head. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Soto will have a run-scoring double. A couple of good swings this inning by the Trojans on doubles. That ball was juiced by Soto. Again, hit it through the teeth of the wind. I think that's going to – it might be a home run if the wind's not blowing like it is. Webb playing really shallow. You see how shallow he is playing right there, and he just took off and had to put that head down and go on a sprint. Nice swing by Soto. It's his second hit of the ball game. Here's Jake Wright. So the Trojans were down to their final strike and out, but not done yet. Sixteen to eight game. Tell you what, this Little Rock team—they can swing the bat. They're going to score runs. Racerbacks had two five-run innings and a four-run inning since the fifth. Two balls and a strike. Strikeout, wild pitch. Well, we had to have something like that. Well, says you. <laughs> and now Aiden Garrett will bat. He's had three strikeouts and an RBI single tonight. Runners on the corner, so to run home this inning. Would Evan Taylor be in line to get the win tonight out of all this mess? I'm going to have to think about that okay, one. Okay, you work on it. You let me know tomorrow. There's a <laughs> wave of a miss. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with your uh, scoring skills. I think you've done it once or twice. Usually pretty spot on. The two one. Vermillion's not messing around. No, he, he's been a little anywhere from right now. Ninety two to ninety five on those fastballs. That's strike three. 